today to discuss the sweeping gains made by anti-EU parties in the European elections. Here, UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets and has been recalling the helicopter crash when he was standing in the Buckingham constituency. It's just over four years ago that I crawled out of the wreckage of that, of that aeroplane wondering whether I had much time left to live. And here I am today uh, leading a party that has won a national election. So if any of you think you've seen the high watermark of UKIP, you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. Junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Trainees were withdrawn last July after concerns were raised about a lack of supervision by senior staff. The hospital say the conditional arrangements will be reviewed at regular intervals. Police are continuing to hunt a prisoner who walked out of an open jail in Buckinghamshire on Sunday evening. 36-year-old Wayne McLeod absconded from Spring Hill Prison in Grendon Underwood sometime between 5.15 and 8. 15. Thames Valley Police believe he may be in the Reading area. A retirement home in Bedford has come up with a fresh way of helping residents with dementia backed by government funding of £140,000. Communal areas at Dame Alice Court have been transformed into themed areas and the hairdressers has a 1950s look to help residents remind them of their past. Vivian Cornelius is the manager. These improvements will hopefully have areas that they will bring back their memory. And it's also about isolation, that people don't feel lost. So um, having all these themed areas and these different rooms with different activities going on will hopefully improve that. In sports, Southampton boss Maurizio Pochettino is in advanced talks with Tottenham to become their new manager. And Andy Murray starts his French Open campaign today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. The weather, cloudy with showers or longer spells of rain, which will be heavy at times. A maximum temperature 15 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. I think it's a great place to live, personally. It's got a lot of things for people growing up. And all this week, we're featuring Dunstable. Best part of Dunstable, Priory Church. It's just full of history and I love it. Dunstable Downs, which attracted us to come here. It's all about where you live. It's a lovely town, it's got a great history. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. There's no more fanny. We're back in the box where we started. If you missed yesterday's show, as I think all of you did, because um, no one called in, but when I say miss, you didn't actually miss anything. What, what, what you did? What? Oh, I don't know about that. Well, that was pretty good. What? It was, it was, even by your standards, Catherine, it was very, very poor. Very poor, but I do think that the listeners have some responsibility for that. Oh, they have complete responsibility. Yes, definitely. Did you give out the number? Yep. Oh. We said call me now as well. Oh, did you? But they never. Well, we gave up. Well, oh. I think some of those topics were gold. Yeah. I think we should put them out again. No, I which, never want to speak of them again. Which, what's your favourite foreign act? Yep. And which celebrity would you like to adopt as a baby? I went for Stevie Wonder. Yeah, I Money wanted Gene. Oh. I wanted Gene Wilder, but then you put me off him. Yeah. I'll have Ronnie Corbett. Isn't it funny she mentions Ronnie Corbett? I can do an excellent Ronnie Corbett impression. No, oh, you okay. Can't. I was talking to the producer just the oh other day. Oh my God! When did he walk in? Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I thank you. Lots coming up on the show, including child arrests down, dementia care up. And junior doctors back in after being out. Non-compass-based directions, guys. Give it me. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, I did ask the team to find a better song. They haven't. Instead, they're busy turning on Good Morning This Is Britain, so I'm afraid you have to listen to this.
this is In Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. 08459 455 555 is the phone number. Now, we're always hearing how kids today have got fewer boundaries, and if you believe what you read in some of the papers, they're cheekier, more aggressive, more lawless, more naughty, more disrespectful, and just, you know, more unpleasant generally. Well, one charity would like to burst that bubble for you. According to the uh, Howard League for Penal Reform, police are arresting significantly fewer children across the three counties than they were five years ago. Catherine Boyle has been looking into this. What do the figures tell us, Kath? Right, well, if the Howard League's got its sums right, these numbers are down dramatically from child uh, arrest levels five years ago. In Hertfordshire, arrests, we're looking at a drop of 67%, with just over 5,000 children arrested in 2008, compared to just under 2,000 in 2013. It's a similar story in Bedfordshire, arrests down by 57%. And in the Thames Valley, which is potentially more telling given the much wider area it covers, because it covers Buckinghamshire, Berkshire and Oxfordshire, child arrests have fallen by 69% over that five-year period. Gosh, what's the reduction being put down to? The Howard League is taking a bit of credit for this, to be fair. The charity says it's been working with police to review arrest procedures and get officers to use more discretion. The idea being to keep as many children as possible out of the criminal justice system, something these figures suggest is now happening. The challenge, according to the Howard League now, is to make sure those numbers don't creep back up again. Howard League is talking about child arrests. What, what, What age does that mean these days? Well, the age of criminal responsibility in England and Wales is 10, so we're talking about children aged from 10 to 17 because at 18 you're legally an adult. If we break down the figures, over the last five years 11 10-year-olds were arrested across the three police areas that cover our patch, and we know that in Bedfordshire almost 150 14-year-olds were arrested, again, over a five-year period. What the figures don't tell us is what crimes were committed and whether any children were charged. So this is great, this means that the, the, the less, there's less crime, doesn't it? Uh, well, not necessarily. Oh. The police and Howard League in insist that it is the case, and actually it's a mixture of both, that there are fewer arrests because there's less crime. The Howard League believes that the best way to stop crime is to arrest fewer people in the first place, because the idea is that once a young person gets caught up in the system, their behaviour is more likely to spiral. The police tell us that despite what we might read in the papers, crime overall is going down, but of course what we read in the papers is that their figures are skewed. The police are telling us that. They've not been logging everything, cheeky little sausages. Well, we can talk about that in more detail this morning when I say we, you. You've got Frances Crook from the Howard League. She's on just after seven o'clock and then Hertfordshire's Police and Crime Commissioner David Lloyd will be talking to you in the studio at eight. David Lloyd's coming in. He is. He's not been in for a while. No. Nope. I've not done my hair or anything. Catherine, thank you. No, you're welcome. Is that done? Uh, yeah. Can I go? Um, yeah. Feels weird, doesn't it? After Does, I sat here the whole awkward, time yesterday. Yeah, I, well, no, it feels good. Oh. It feels good. Okay. Catherine was in the studio for the whole show yesterday and it feels... Well, no, don't... If you're going to be... It felt right. It felt good to me, but it's fine. No, it felt awkward. But don't go with a cob on. Have you got an attitude? What's her... What's her beef, Kels? Um, where does the saying cob on come from? I what does it that. mean? Your mic's on, Kath. I believe that. Just used me for three hours yesterday and then... Sp- Your mic's oh, on. Oh, hi. Why is there an attitude? We had fun yesterday, but oh, that no, was fine. It, it was it was a one off. Everything's fine. You knew you knew the setup, it was a one off, oh. and then we'd be back to our normal roles. Right. And I'd be doing this. Yep. And you'd be doing What's Whatever her, it is I do. What's her beef? Girls. I think she feels used. Well, that's her problem. How oh. do you think I feel? <sighs> Can she hear us? Yeah, she's oh, very upset. Nuts. The show was a stinker yesterday, and let's just say... I tried my best, but he kept talking. No, who won the, Who won a Radio Academy Award? Don't call it a Sony. Us. No, who's... N- OK, Us. whose name is on the award? Ours. No! Well, mine is a bit, because I've got... Uh, it's Kelly. That is the worst... Hmm? Who's your favourite foreign act? 08459 455... This, can I do mine? Oh, go on, Kels has got a topic. People who sing differently to how you think they're going to sing. <laughs> Bee Gees, for example, mm. look like lions. Yeah, sing, ne- like, sing like mice. Neil Sedaka looks like a man, sings like a lady. It does sing like a lady. Um... Tracy Chapman. Bloke. <laughs> Tracy Chapman is the most boring singer songwriter. I went out with a girl who had that album. You got a first car. It's a tune. <laughs> it's not a tune. It's not a tune. It's a dirge. Imagine trying to cop off with a girl who you know is up for it yeah. when she's playing that mood I hate when girls killer. Are up for it and then they play that. That, that whole really warms me up. 
<laughs> Sorry. Tell you what my mate used to swear by. Oh, God. Back in the day. Yeah. The Dawson's Creek soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd have been listening to the Dawson's Se- uh, Creek soundtrack to get um, girls hot, I'd have been copping off with children. <laughs> well, we were much younger than you. Thank you. For- well, steady on. You're 40 this year. I am not. You- oh, wait, four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. How old is Kath this year? <laughs> Speaking of which, Kath doesn't like being called Kath. This is a genuine phone in now. We- what? Mine's genuine. OK, well, you won't get any calls on it. Oh, wait, four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. Kath doesn't, now. Kath doesn't like being called Kath. I know. She's f- like really upset by it. I'm not. I'm Shocked. not. I would say I'm irked. She's irked by it. I thought it was her name. Well, it's Catherine, but Catherine is three syllables. That's just selfish. I'm not. Too I'm, long. I don't like anyone enough to use three syllables. That's crazy. Life is too short. Even baby. Madonna's pushing it. Yeah, life is too short. So I've been toying with with uh, the idea of calling you Kate. Kate. She's cringing. That's what my dad calls me. You can't call me that. But that means it's your name. It means it's my secret, private, personal name. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> and if you know that, you own my soul. So can we just leave it, at Catherine, or Your Majesty? Oh, Catherine. It. What on earth should we call Kate? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, a very good morning and looking rather quiet so far this morning. We're not seeing any major problems or delays. Expecting some delays on the M1 at Luton Spur between Junction 10A, the Kidneywood Roundabout, and Junction 10 for Luton Airport as those major roadworks continue there. Also on the M25, narrow lanes between Junction 25 for Enfield and 27, the M11. Also a speed restriction to be aware of for 50 miles per hour. So far checking on the trains and not seeing any reported problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three, Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Nicola. 6.16, it's uh, Tuesday the 27th of May. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. David Cameron will join other EU leaders in Brussels today, where they will discuss the success of UKIP and other Eurosceptic parties in the European elections. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful institution. BBC Three Counties Radio. Inspect this. Every weekday morning from nine. Good morning, welcome to the JVS Show. Your local stories. Have you had to rebuild your life after being a victim of crime? Do you think it's inhumane to keep people in prison for life? Do you think that immigration needs to stop? Your local life. Why do 70% of this country feel immigration is wrong? We've actually got an open doors policy. I am just so angry listening to some of them people. What the government are doing, they start introducing American type sentencing like 200 years in prison. The JVS Show. British people are not xenophobic. Weekday mornings from nine on BBC Three Counties Radio. Because I had to flare, I was ein der Tourse, war ein Rocky Dol, und alles rief, da kann man rock me up, but there is too much. Und es war irgendwie nur Plastic Money in den Modebanken gegen ihn. Woher die Schulden kamen, war wohl jeder Mann bekannt. Er war ein Mann der Frau und Frau und liebten seinen Punk. Er war ein Superstar, er war so populär, er war zu exaltiert. Genau das war sein Flair. Er war ein Virtuose, war ein Rocky Doll. Und alles ruft noch heute Captain Rock mit Amadeus. Amadeus. 
You're missing gold while this record's going out. You're missing gold. So, first of all, Kelly thought uh, this song was called Amadez. Is he saying Amadez? Amadez. Ah, 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 Amadez. Mund. Two, two. But what... Then then what did you think the song was about? Um, Is it about the 1984 American period drama film? (laughs) What, Amadeus? Yep. No! That's a good film. It's a good film, isn't it? I love that film. Is the song about Amadeus, your technology partner, the world's leading supplier of IT solutions? No! Is it the Amadeus digital... No! ...property fund... No? No! Is it the multi-award winning venue caterers? Just say the name again. Amadeus. Yeah, fun times. That, 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 ladies and gentlemen, is how you... He's dead now. Amadeus. Uh, well, yeah, he's... Sorry? Dead. Pauper's Paul, grave. Uh, Falco. Oh. Died in a car crash, I think. Oh. Morning. Sometimes the foreigners... Is he, is he German or Austrian? He's something, isn't he? Yeah. Let's say German. Sometimes, for the mo- 99.9% of German music is absolutely awful. What about 9 and 9 Dig Luftballon? That's the point one. That do you remember trio? A da da da. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Should we go German da, this da. morning? Let's, let's go German. Let's play craft work. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know much craft work. I know that they're quite. They play, they're a computer, aren't they? Don't they just set their demo on and leave? Because Germans like punk. The, the Live Eight concert. Remember the Live Eight? Yes, where I was there. We, I was at the back. I was with the rich people. I was with the rich people. Ending poverty. Well, poverty's ended, so it worked. So it doesn't matter how we got there; it's ended. Sorry, Kelly. I was in the womb. Anyway, uh, so the British concert was great. Uh, Bono, Paul McCartney, the Hall. The German concert, it was well. I've it was Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson was playing in Germany, surrounded either side by awful German punk bands. It was they love punk over there. Guys, I'm talking to you two. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They do, don't they? They do, though, don't they? I'm German. Flipping heck. What is this? Do you know what German song I love? Am no, I-, I don't. Go on. Oh, Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alice. No, you can't sing that anymore. Tannenbaum, wie grüßt zu deiner Blätze. Oh, you're that, welcome. Isn't that sweet? Now, time was, if an elderly relative was suffering with dementia, there's a quantum leap. <laughs> gone from German pop songs to, and folk songs to talking about people with dementia. They'd be sent to a home where they'd be stuck in the TV room and allowed to go quietly dotty. Thankfully, things are changing. Let me give you a local example. At Dame Alice Court in Bedford, they found that people come alive when surrounded by everyday items and photos from their youth. And they've taken that a step further by turning round one of the communal areas into a 1950s hairdresser's. The thinking being that the tiniest memory can spark the mind back into action, almost like jump-starting a car. The project was funded by the government at a cost of £140,000. Well, we sent our reporter Tony Fisher along to meet the homes manager, Vivian Cornelius, to see whether that money was well spent. So, Vivian, we're now in the hallway, the entranceway. Yes. There's a little record player playing there, old-style-looking gramophone. <laughs> If we come down here, we go into what you call the West End area, That's is that correct. right? We've um, themed the corridors um, after consulting with our customers here so that they're um, areas of recognition and um, themed areas so that they'll know where they live and there'll be interest areas for them. So it um, reduces isolation and it will help with activities and rather than having long corridors with nothing there, they've got things to look at and see. So this is the um, music theatre and cinema area. As you can see, we've got a TV screen here and it's got films rolling 
during the day and they can change it. And it looks like an old style cinema, doesn't it? With the curtains either side. And then on the side there you've got pictures of all the old movies. It's a wonderful life, Citizen Kane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the idea. Sound of music. That's right. The idea is we've done a sort of t- timeline, so it will appeal to people through the ages. So the very older customers will re- remember, um, and hopefully right through to the sixties, seventies. Hey, come out with that book! <laughs> okay, Vivian, we've walked into the what do you call this? The radio area. The yeah, radio this room? corridor is called Presley Lane, and it's all about music. And, um, yeah, it's about um, bringing back memories of maybe times when they would go to musicals, shows, listen to records more. So, again, we've done a bit of a timeline with different um, eras so that it will appeal to all people and bring back those memories that maybe have been forgotten over time. Pictures, 1940s, 50s, Elvis Presley, Doris Day, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Cliff Richard. Yeah, so there's a sort of something that will appeal to everybody and bring back those memories to everybody. Again, this was a corridor that would have been quite plain and blank, so this is about an area where they can stop now, they can have a rest if it's too long to walk down the corridor, but it gives them something to think about and an area of interest. Mm-hmm. We now walked into the lounge area, which is looks looks like a pub, doesn't it? You've got a pub set up, you've got a dartboard, everything to remind them of, of... The days when they used to go to the pub, yes. yes. Um, this previously was a lounge which didn't have much for use. Um, it was very plain and boring, um, didn't get much interest in it. So we've tried to theme it again um, to make and to make it something that might be familiar to many mm-hmm. people. Old-style pictures, martini. Yes. But it will be appealed to different generations, um, old or young. Um, and as I said, we've got things that are going on in here, so they actually can come and sit quietly or they can play darts um, and come and chat with their friends or relatives. So um, it's mm. just about getting conversations going and bringing back those memories when they would have gone out with their family. And how much difference does this all make to the, the people living here, do you think? Or is it a bit early to say? Because you've only just redone all this, haven't you? That's correct. It is early. Already, though, there are signs that, um, speaking to the uh, manager here, that there is a lot of interest and people are coming in here with their families and, and talking about um, times gone by and what they used to do. So we're already seeing signs, but we will be monitoring that and our care team here will be analysing and, and, and taking sort of data and um, to see how well it is working. Well, that was Tony Fisher speaking to the home manager, Vivian Cornelius, there about that. Kelly Betts um, is rather excitable at the moment. It's like an excitable little puppy before it's uh, had its knackers lopped off to protect um, your leg. Uh, Kelly, what is it you were saying? Which part? The, the bit you were talking to me about when I was speaking. Oh, your hair. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what... The way you've... <laughs> What's the beef? Do you remember Mr Majika? I do, excellent. Uh, yes, well, you've got magic was... powers right about now. I've got, I've got, my... yes, I, I might have. I'm not, I'm not... Can you just... <laughs> Well, Kelly's doing the thing where she's trying to stifle a laugh by blowing up her cheeks <laughs> to look like a fat woman. I was going to say something very bad. Okay, say well, it. Have you, no, don't say it, because if you know... You can say it if you want. Have you noticed I'm not rising to any of your bait this morning? Mm. I think you, can, you could almost say that. I'm not rising to any of your bait this morning because I have reached a level of um, zen. Yeah. So I'm not bothered by anything that you say. In other words, you need another coffee. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was I was getting so much flack. Basically, I've had a transformative experience yesterday. Oh, really? From uh, those uh, vapists, e-cigarette users. Well, they, you think they might have a point now? They like to call themselves vapors. They're not. They're vapists. Particularly because when you call them vapors, they get really upset. I've been getting so much abuse from vapists the last couple of days, and I found myself getting het up, getting angry, getting yeah, wound up, getting really so. How? Tell us. Why? How? It's why, how, actually, not how, why. we have changed it up. That's a remix. Anyway, they were giving me so much abuse. C word this, F word this, oh, W word this, K word this, P, P word this, R word, everything. All of these words. Mm. I was getting angry. I was getting upset. I was feeling bitter. Mm. And then I, um, my boys took me, we parked in a car park. Yeah. To go swimming, more on anon. Yeah. And my boys took me on a shortcut from the car mm. to the swimming pool. Mm. It wasn't a shortcut, it was a long cut. Oh. It involved weaving our way through cars. But it made me think, the world is OK, and these guys can't hurt me. Not the children, they can. They were jumping on my nuts. 
the vapists cannot hurt me. No, because their cigarettes don't burn. I was reaching a point. What I'm trying to say is there are some things more important than... Vapists. Uh, sticks and stones. There's things more important than sticks and stones. You can't hurt me with your words. Me? Anyone. Seriously, though, your hair. Oh, for goodness sakes. Will you stop doing that? It's rude. Travel news for beds, hards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading southbound starting to look rather heavy on the speed sensors this morning between Junction 10 for Luton Airport and Junction 9 for Redbourne. Those major roadworks are taking place on the M1, so often causing delays there. The M25, do expect delays in both directions between Junction 25 for Enfield and Junction 27, the M11. Major roadworks continue there as well. So far, taking a look at the trains this morning and everything is running to time. No reported problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. David Cameron will join other EU leaders in Brussels today, where they will discuss the success of UKIP and other Eurosceptic parties in the European elections. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August, following a success inspection. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Southampton boss Maurizio Pochettino is in advanced talks with Tottenham to become their new manager. Spurs have been looking for a new manager since sacking Tim Sherwood early this month. Pochettino took over at Southampton in January 2013. Fleetwood won the League Two playoff final, beating Burton 1-0 at Wembley, three years after winning the League Two playoff final with Stevenage. Former Borough skipper Mark Roberts captained the Lancashire side to promotion. Unbelievable. Look at them scenes there, the fans. You know, they've, they've come in numbers here today. I don't... They've not been to Wembley in 30 years. This club, you know, it keeps going from strength to strength. It's an incredible story and it's just not stopping yet. Some massive gains next year. I mean, you know, we'll celebrate this moment, we'll enjoy this moment because we've we worked so hard for it over the season since, you know, day one of pre-season. But, you know, League One, we're looking forward to it already. And Wickham striker Stephen Craig has signed a new one-year contract. The 33-year-old joined Wanderers last summer. In tennis, there was a major shock at the French Open with the third seed and Australian Open champion Stan Wawrinka losing in four sets to Spain's Guillermo Garcia Lopez. Andy Murray starts today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. It's a special place. You know, all of the, the, the slams are special in, in different ways, but, you know, I've always, always enjoyed coming here and played you know the best play court tennis of my career is normally come uh, here at this event and yeah I'm, I'm very very excited to be back and Mercedes boss Nicky Lauda says he will talk to Lewis Hamilton before the next race in Canada to smooth over the tense situation in the team. The Hertfordshire driver accused teammate Nico Rosberg of deliberately going off the Monaco track to stop him challenging for pole in Saturday's qualifying session, with Rosberg then going on to win Sunday's race. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at seven. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, this isn't German. What's going on? That's not German. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a minute. We'll fix this. We can fix this bad boy up. Fix this bad boy. Here we go. Soft start, isn't it?
Now that. Das ist sehr gut. Ja, das ist einfach klasse, ja. <lacht> einfach klasse. Ja, yeah, ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. You say that, that means first class in German. Wow. And you say it to a German person, they go, was? Was, was ist los? They don't know the... I was taught a dud phrase by my German teacher. Wow. I only did a year of German. Franzi. I did German GCSE in a year. I only got a B. <laughs> I did German GCSE in two years. I got an E. <laughs> so I did it in a third year. Oh, soft bit, quite a bit. <laughs> Whatever. I did it in a third year. I got a D. Oh. I had to sit with the class below me. Were you actually in the class? Yeah, uh, well, technically. Das ist nicht sehr gut. Ja, das ist, das ist nicht... Good. Nein. Du hattest keine Idee. Uh, speaking of Germans, that's your cue. I haven't got anything about a German. Uh, yes, you have, mate. Where? You've totally got a German story in the papers. What about Kate Middleton? Thank you. She's not German. No, well... Her no. husband kind of is. Yeah, exactly. All oh, right, OK, do no, it again. No. Do it again. Speaking of Germans... Oh, them royals. No, but that's not the German part of the story. Oh, they were the ones looking, were they? Have you read the story that you want it, to no. do? No, I haven't right, seen I'll it. Right, I'll do you, your, I'll you do your story. You tell me, you're the one that what spotted it. Privacy row over Kate photograph. A German newspaper has a German newspaper has sparked a new royal privacy. What are you doing in it, Kelly? Taking a picture. Oh, for goodness sakes! Thank There's you. a privacy row. I didn't give you permission to. Thank I want to sign your waiver. Can I see your waivers? A German newspaper has sparked a royal privacy row by publishing a paparazzi shots of the Duchess of Cambridge's bottom. Oh. The newspaper article stated. Photos shot a favourite. D- Can you allow to do the voice? Um, um, carefully. Photos shot a favourite. I can't do it. It's a very angry accent, isn't it? it yeah, it sounds cross. Photo show. Imagine this in German. Photo show our favourite Duchess Kate, 32, in the Australian Blue Mountains. The rotor blades of the royal helicopter swirl the air so that Kate's summer dress blew up, giving a clear view of her beautiful bum. Oh. <laughs> and do you know what? Yeah. It's tidy. It's very tidy. You know, it could be far worse. Just to say, uh, Catherine and I have Googled it. Well, you Googled it and I looked over your shoulder. If you want to see, type in Bilt, Der Bilt, uh, Duchess of Cambridge, B-I-L-D is the thing, and you'll, you'll see it. It'll and it's the up. sort of thing that, you know, they weren't doing an up the, sh- the skirt no. shot, as many paps do. <sighs> right place, right time. She's not listened to the, the queen. queen. What's the queen's, the queen's advice? Said, put some weights in the hem of your dress. Did I've never, she do it? No, she didn't. I have never seen the queen's bum. No. Because she's got weights at the bottom of her dress. Precisely. Uh, Duchess of Cambridge, you, you, come on, love, you know, you either do it or don't. Or she could get some, she could do um, as the footballers do and maybe have some pants with a message on saying... Up yours, Dolores. Bog off pervs. Yeah. And it, it, either way, either way, she's got nothing to or, worry about. Oh, God she's, save the Queen. God save the Queen. She's, uh, she's uh, uh, tidy, as you say. Very, very tidy. Exactly. But um, it's unfortunate. I bet she's horrified. But um, it, it was an accident waiting to happen. What else have you got? Um, there's pictures of Nigel Farage. He's always got a beer in his hand in the pictures in the papers these days, hasn't he? must hasn't be so he? drunk, that man. I, well, I think that's what they're trying to put across. Bit too late now, isn't it? Is that it's it? It's too late to be putting the pictures in of him you're looking like, um, um, like a, a crackpot. You're like the oral equivalent of Matt, the cartoonist. I know, I could draw it. I, it probably would be expressed better through the medium of penny. Justin. Morning, boss. What, what do you want? Well, I'm just here to, to kind of join the conversation and say, Kate, fair oh. play. <laughs> Have you, did you see the picture? Uh, no, but I'm desperate to see it now. I'll you send you the link. Well. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. You had a story for us this morning, didn't you? Yes, um, almost nine out of ten We'll children. get to that in a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> Child star Macaulay Culkin's band pelted with pints in Nottingham. Oh, dear. Yeah. Apparently they were playing a gig in Manchester last night and he got uh, booed off during this kazoo solo. Right, OK. If you produce a kazoo, yeah. you're asking for it, aren't They're you? called the Pizza Underground and they play uh, Velvet Underground songs, but they change the lyrics to have pizzas in. Right. I, Flip it, eh? It's funny, maybe once when you've had a few with your friends behind closed doors. Justin, you've got a story for us. Yeah, GCSE German. Sorry? i got a U. Did you really? Mm. Oh. I was very proud of that. Here we go. What exams did you get a U in? Can't help you there. <laughs> oh, yo, oh, wow. I think um, um, history A-level, I think. Right. I really was struggled at A. A-levels are so hard. Yeah. You've got a U, seriously. I've got three A's. What? A level. But you're and a B in general studies. But you're not as uh, only a B. You're not as clever as me. Classes. You're not as clever as me. I'm going to make a bold statement right now. Please do, just Okay. The people who are the cleverest, who get the uh, A's and A-stars, no common sense. Fact. That, my friend, 
is very, very true. Do you think mm. I'm flighty and whimsical? Catherine, okay. Uh, Catherine uh, had seen me walk ahead in front of her and turn the corner, okay, yeah. this morning. She came through a door going, I know he's there. He's going to jump out and try and scare me. Yeah. I jumped out and I scared her. Exactly. She's got coffee everywhere. <laughs> That's because my mind goes into overdrive. I have an excellent imagination and I, I already did the frightening for myself. Boozy students tried to barbecue a badger at a university campus, it was claimed yesterday. What? Why would you want to eat that? It's got TB and rabies and, and probably other things. it's a protected species. Witnesses said the group attempted to cook the dead animal, then flung the charred carcass at the window of an accommodation block. Students get up to far worse than that. They do stupid stuff. See, they get up to far worse than that. Haven't we seen what's, the, the, you know, what's happening in America recently? Blimey. Justin, you've got a story for us. Yes, um, catch a Google. We'll, uh, <laughs> oh, he knows how to get you, doesn't he? Every time. Listen, you know that big model of Jesus Christ in Rio? Yeah, I'm aware of it, yeah. It's Did big. you know you could climb up inside it and pop your head out of his shoulder? Why? Because that's what this guy's done. <gasps> I are didn't you, know that. Are you allowed to do that? Well, I don't know. Or is There's, that some sort of maintenance shaft? The sun gets Christ the Redeemer to bless England. Our man scales two and a half thousand foot high landmark to get World Cup boost. So basically, he's climbed up. And um, Jesus, that means we're going to win the World Cup. Mm. But I didn't know you could climb up inside. He's got his head out of the shoulder. Oh, I'd love to. That's on the bucket list, which is a very trendy phrase at the moment. Stick your head out there. That would make me feel sick. I want to stick my head out of Christ's shoulder. You've been up the Eiffel. Have you been up the Statue of Liberty? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I was disappointed with how small it was. It's tiny, the Statue of Liberty. Shame, isn't it? Uh, It's not like in Ghostbusters 2. No, not at all. Hey, Justin. Yes. Yesterday, mm. I drank so much urine. What? What? And touched so many bare naked bodies. Yes. It was a really uh, memorable bank holiday Monday. How are you still here? Well, it's bad for you, you know. I've seen some of these drunk programs at weekends. No. They... no. I was stone cold sober. I went swimming. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> We've all been there. I went swimming, right? My wife said, oh, the boys want to go That's swimming. That's the problem. Everyone had been. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bank holiday, right? The pool was so busy, there was a queue to get in, and a fellow said, yeah, sorry, we're only letting people in when other people come out. It, they one finished. in, one out? Yeah, one in, one out policy at the swimming pool, right? Wow. So, went, went, eventually got in, went into the, the family, I had the boys with me, went into the family changing room. I will not tell you the conversation that took place in the changing room. You Cat- can imagine, they all got changed together. They thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Look at that. They said. Anyway, we didn't have change for the locker, so we left our stuff in there, in the dressing room, went to get the change. We came back, there was another family in my dressing room. No. And the, we, my boy was knocking, and he put his head underneath, and normally I'd say, don't bother, but I was like, yeah, actually, do that, son. And a woman came out and said, oh, I saw all the bags, I didn't, I didn't see any people. <gasps> so she just rocked up and got changed in my dressing room. Anyway, it was, it was uh, what I imagine hell to be like. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can, sir. Uh, are you a speedo, man? Um, not in public, no. Long, no? long, long knee-length shorts. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Just at home. Yeah, no, but no, no buggy, uh, bug, buggies, no mm-hmm. budgies are being smuggled. Budgies, smuggled. Yeah, yeah. It was hellish. It was full of people. There was. Wi- I don't think I saw any water. I just saw flesh, <laughs> human flesh. I've touched so many fat old men's hairy backs. Uh, Disgusting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Catherine, that's your your life basically. But I, I felt. What, what should we call her, Just? Kate? Kath? Kathy? Um, I think... Um, Catalina? I think Kath is nice. I know she doesn't like it, but I think Kath has got a nice ring to it. It's kind of um, a friendly ring. Hi, Kath. You know, it sounds good. Hey. Rolls off the tongue. Hey, Kath. Hey, Katie. Katie? Oh, no, no, no. no. I haven't been Kathy since about seven. Oh, eight, four, five, nine, Can four, double, five. Can you just call me Catherine? Five, double, five. It's too many syllables. That's what my name is, though. It's too many syllables. That's what my name is, E. It's Catherine. Three oh, syllables. No. I'm not, I'm not going to rise to the bait. I'm zen. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you have genuinely got a story yes, for us I about have. iPods and things. Yes. Um, almost 9 out of 10 children aged 6 to 10 use TVs, iPads, mobile phones, computers and video games whilst having dinner. No. Hang on. What are the stats? Almost 9 out of 10 children. No. You say no, but it's happening. Not in my house. That is... Seriously, though. I mean, you're, you're saying not in your house. No. Every single evening, your children have got nothing to do with, with TV, iPads, no. nothing. No. We, we sit down together, if we possibly can. If it's just me and Dad's not home, we sit down together and we have the telly off and we talk to each other. No no electronic devices during the, during the supper. Play. My brother-in-law does this. And he's a really sensible, well-rounded, wonderful man. But at supper, he'll get out the iPad and they'll watch the... Um, who are those Australian idiots? The Wiggles. The Wiggles movie. They made a movie. Wow. It's quite good, actually. 90 minutes of wiggling. Yes, it is. Uh, and they'll watch the, the Wiggles. And it's got to the point where I've kind of said, um, look, Matthew, can we... Um, I don't like my boys watching. Can we do something different at dinner? You know, I, know I don't want to get in the way of you bringing up your children badly, but can we... Can, I, don't, I don't want my boys watching this at dinner. We yeah. occasionally have a carpet picnic and 
and we'll sit and watch the telly and eat pizza on the floor. Ooh. Ooh. But that's very rare and that's a treat. How common. Yeah, it's a bit common. It's, it's a lovely. Bit. It's yeah. delicious. We'll be back to your roots. <laughs> but I've managed to get rid of my common roots. No, I've that's cut a, them off. My roots are Greg's. Here day. we go. I'll tell you this, Justin. If go you on. let your kids play on a computer, play on a phone, watch TV while they're eating their supper or their lunch or anything. You're a bad parent, yes, boom. Yes, the controversial view. I, I think, though, I think the majority of people nowadays will say, well, what can I do? If my kid wants to watch TV, they're going to watch TV. I don't think we're going to find many parents, a bit like Catherine, who who turn everything off and, and actually sit down and have a family dinner without those distractions. Everything slows down when the telly goes on. You, they'll mm. never finish their tea. No, we have it off. <laughs> Good so to speak. <laughs> hey! Ah. And on that bombshell, Justin, go and get yeah. some people's opinions. We'll speak to you later. Thank you, boss. Ta-ta. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The A1M heading at southbound, now looking rather slow between Junction 8 for Stevenage and Junction 7. The M1 heading southbound on the sensors, very slow moving between Junction 11, Dunstable Road and Junction 9 at Redbourne. Take a look at the M25 heading anti-clockwise, looking very heavy between Junction 21, the M1 and Junction 18 for Chorleywood on camera. And in Borenwood, looking rather heavy on the A1 heading southbound between the Holiday Inn and Stirling Corner. Also looking rather slow on the M25 anti-clockwise between 16 and the M40 and 15, the M4. Nicola Richards, BBC Three, Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Nicola. 6.47, it's Tuesday the 27th of May. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. David Cameron will join other EU leaders in Brussels today, where they will discuss the success of UKIP and other Eurosceptic parties in the European, ele- European elections. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. 6.47, let's get the latest weather now. Here's K-Dog. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Do you want to open my mic? It's here? you. It's me. Oh, for goodness sake. I know. What so happened to weather at this time? I don't know. They were here yesterday. I've dialed them up lots and they're not there. Unbelievable. Okay, well, away you go. Okay, off the top of my head. Most areas will start off cool and cloudy this morning Such with showery plan. outbreaks of rain. Sorry. Sorry, Ian. What were you saying? Nothing, mate. This rain will affect most parts throughout much of the day with occasional heavy bursts at times. It's Mostly finished. Mostly temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. It's finished. Take a coat and a brolly. Don't give people clothing advice. That's you're what not, they want the it, weather it, for. It, they might not, have cagoules. Uh, no one has cagoules these days. You're, you're not got one. It's not the uh, now it's what you should wear today report. It's the weather. Uh, take a coat with a hood. Don't tell them what to wear. Some gloves, it. possibly. People or a stylish ki- Mac with a belt tied behind and an umbrella. I want to hear what happened at the carnival. Do you guys? Yeah. Mm. This. On Sunday, Luton was a sea of feathers, families and flamboyance. It's amazing. It's huge. Lots of young people have been working like crazy um, up at the UK centre and, and in their homes. And we were there live all afternoon. I'm very proud today. It's uh, the first year that we've taken over the whole event completely. Hearing from the people taking part... Tell us. How long have you had to train to actually do this? Have you had to practice on this? It doesn't look easy standing here. The people behind the costumes. It hasn't got the heels like you have on your normal feet. And the people who made it all happen. And people from different ages, adults and kids, that were part of this big dancing group. Catch up with everything you missed via our website, bbc.co.uk slash three counties. been last year. It wasn't as much people last year as it is this year. Or go to facebook.com slash bbc3cr.
telling me they don't have a word for baby in German? They should have called it Liebling, Liebling. Liebling, Liebling. Of course they should have done. Ooh, what does that, does that mean baby? No, it means lovely. Well, then why they shouldn't have called it that, then? They should call it baby, baby in German. Well, let's find out what baby is in German. Bebe. <laughs> Oh, wow. Now, you may remember that trainee doctors were removed from the paediatric unit at Bedford Hospital last July over fears a child could be harmed. The problems were caused by a lack of senior staff to supervise junior doctors. The hospital's chief executive, Stephen Conroy, told me about an incident involving a consultant. One of our consultants failed to respond to, to an urgent call out, you know, to respond to uh, trainees' requirements in the evening for, for advice. A consultant failed to return to a, a, an urgent call out? He failed to respond on, on the telephone, which is what was required. That's pretty worrying, an urgent call-out. That, that is worrying, and that, that means that patient safety could be at risk. Now, in that case, no patient harm uh, came, came to be. No harm came to be, but was someone potentially at risk? I would imagine they would be if, if uh, the call wasn't answered. It's a level of unacceptable risk that we can't stand. We, we have since... So the patient was at risk? The, the patient could have been at risk. Well, now Health Education East of England, the body that withdrew the trainees in the first place, says they can now return from August August, following a successful inspection. The hospital's chief executive, Stephen Conroy, joins me once again. Morning, Stephen. Morning, Ian. Uh, Are you 100% confident that the incident you described last year won't happen again? Um, As confident as I can be. Obviously, we're reliant on staff who work on the ward every day. Um, But we've improved things tremendously. We're fully staffed. Got additional doctors, additional nurses compared to last year. Uh, we've reviewed all our processes, all our risk management. Um, so, so I sleep well at night on this at the moment. What measures have been put in place to make the unit safe for junior doctors to work in? Well, the main thing is that we've got more senior staff. We've now got eight consultants in post. Um, we've had a new senior uh, clinical leader, Andy Raffles, I think you've spoken to him before. Um, and we've also done a lot of work with the education and training department about making sure we've got the right curriculum in place. Um, and the right support processes for junior doctors across the organisation. Uh, junior doctors were described as emotional at the time for raising concerns. There, there were also uh, kind of whispered accusations of bullying. That was unacceptable. Do you think that those problems have been sorted out? I think they have. I mean, we, we've, we certainly talk to our junior doctors on a regular basis. I, I, I do myself, and we had a survey recently, uh, the GMC organised an independent survey, uh, and that didn't show up any bullying at all. Uh, not to say there aren't, aren't a few problems we need to work on, um, but certainly no sense of any bullying in, in the organisation. How will um, this, this be monitored, Stephen? Because if uh, junior doctors uh, have uh, fears and uh, they are feeling uncomfortable to step forward and express those fears, h- how will that be dealt with? Well, we, what we do is we meet regularly with the junior doctors. There are various forums, so if the doctor's not getting support from their immediate consultant colleague... Um, they can go to the education training department or the director of medical education. Um, we're also starting a, a series of, of uh, uh, internet surveys so, so that junior doctors can rate those anonymously. Uh, and I've told them that they, can, they can come to me directly or the medical director uh, if they feel that they're not being listened to at any point. Do, will all junior doctors return in August or do they come back in phases? How does it work? No, they're coming back in phases. I mean, this is the first time that the uh, GMC in Health Education England have ever returned uh, trainee doctors once they've been withdrawn. So that's uh, fantastic news for us. But clearly they're going to be very cautious. And the idea is that they'll, they'll give us four trainees back in August. They'll carry out a review that's planned anyway in October. Uh, and subject to that review, uh, we should get more trainees back uh, following April, uh, and if that goes well as well, for, for another review, uh, we'll have all the trainees back uh, within the, the next 12 months. Stephen, finally, the consultation into health services across Bedfordshire and Milton Keynes has been extended. Why is that, do you think? Um, the, the main reason is, is that we need more time with our, our doctors across the, the, the hospitals and with the GPs uh, to make sure that, that we, all the changes that are proposed have been looked at properly, uh, that the evidence has been considered and the clinicians feel that they're they're safe and an improvement for the local population. Uh, and it's, it's an enormous review. It's very uh, wide-ranging, covering the whole of primary care and both hospitals. So we, we needed more time. Stephen, thank you very much. Always good uh, that you come and talk to us, and hopefully things are, are, are continuing to go in the right direction. That's uh, Bedford Hospital's chief executive, Stephen Comroy, 08459 455 555. Biggers is in Hemel. Good morning, Biggers. How are you doing, fella? I'm fine, thank you, Biggers. What would you like to say? Well, you, you've got a bit of a German theme this morning, haven't you? Yeah. 
Have you forgotten about the um, the summer hit in 1982, the Eurovision Song Contest winning Nicole, a little piece? Oh, Nicole, Nicole. She was fit, mate, wasn't she? She um, she was certainly a great singer-songwriter, if that's what you mean by fit. Yeah, I just had any chance you could play it. Um, I haven't heard it for donkey years. I tell you what, we'll play it tomorrow, because we haven't got time now. Oh, a, a little sunshine, a little oh, laughter, yeah, that's it, that's it. a little something forever after. That was it, wasn't it? Something like that. Oh, you're a top man. Biggers, we'll dig it out for you and play it tomorrow. Germans don't really... We don't really have... What's, your, what's that face? Oh, no, nothing. Do you remember it that? It was uh, days for frizzies, wasn't it? A little... S- frizzies? Mm. What's we'll a fr- give some pictures of uh, Nicole. A Is that who he's talking about? Sunshine. Yeah, yeah, she had long blonde hair. Yeah. A little sunshine, a little laughter. I don't remember it. What year was that? 82. Oh, oh that was five. <laughs> Isn't that Eurovision aware back then? <laughs> so, I'm zen. I'm really zen at the moment. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not riled by your insults. <laughs> Your face is bright red. That's because I just rubbed it really aggressively. And your neck is veiny. That's because I'm straining it. Mm, Stay zen. I'm I'm so flipping zen right now. Zen's working out really nicely. Honestly, guys, I am the most zen thing in the world. And your constant little digs and little needles and little... (laughs) Is having nicked nine... Kleinen effekten on on moi. On mine. Kleinen effekten on mine. What's the real problem, princess? Sorry? Tell us. What? There's no, there's no problem. What seems to be the trouble, Princess? There is... The, I'm so... Mm. I'm so zen at the moment, guys. Yeah. We can Who tell. Is zen? We can tell that he's zen. Who is zen? zen? He's re- related to Amadez. <laughs> Good. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading southbound, very heavy at the moment, between Junction 14 at Milton Keynes and Junction 13 for Bedford Road. And a call from Leslie set for that, so thank you very much. The M1 southbound also heavy between Junction 12 for Flittick and Junction 10 at Luton Airport. The M25 heading anti-clockwise, rather heavy on the sensors between Junction 21, the M1, and Junction 18 for Chorleywood. In Brickettwood, very heavy at the moment on the North Orbital Road, just off the M25. And in Boreham with the A1, it's licking slow, heading southbound between Holiday Inn and Stirling Corner. Taking you look at the A1M, that's slow as well, between Junction 8 for Stevenage and Junction 7. I'm Nicola Richards for BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed. So listen, uh, if you let your kids play with phones, play with um, Pac-Man machines, watch the computers, play Atari while they're eating their supper, then you, my friends, very, very bad parent. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, large fall in child arrests across the three counties. Farage targets Aylesbury in the general election and junior doctors returning to Bedford Hospital. BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in beds, hearts and bucks. The biggest reduction in the last five years was in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes, with arrests down by 69%. More from Jessica Cooper. The information from the Howard League for Penal Reform shows over 5,000 children aged 10 to 17 were arrested in Hertfordshire in 2008, compared to just under 2,000 in 2013. The charity says it's a sign the police are showing more discretion after reviewing their procedures. Last year, 11 10-year-olds were arrested by the three police forces that cover beds, hearts and bucks. David Cameron has been pressing his case for reforms to the European Union in a series of phone calls to EU leaders. He'll join other heads of government in Brussels later today to discuss the sweeping gains made by anti-EU parties in the European elections. Here, UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets and has been recalling the helicopter crash when he was standing in the Buckingham constituency it's just over four years ago that I crawled out of the wreckage of that, of that aeroplane wondering whether I had much time left to live. And here I am today uh, leading a party that has won a national election. So if any of you think you've seen the high watermark of UKIP, you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. 
Junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Trainees were withdrawn last July after concerns were raised about a lack of supervision by senior staff. The hospital say the conditional arrangements will be reviewed at regular intervals. Police are continuing to hunt a prisoner who walked out of an open jail in Buckinghamshire on Sunday evening. 36-year-old Wayne McLeod absconded from Spring Hill Prison in Grendon Underwood sometime between 5.15 and 8.15. Thames Valley Police say they believe he may be in the Reading area. A retirement home in Bedford has come up with a fresh way of helping residents with dementia, backed by government funding of £140,000. Communal areas at Dame Alice Court have been transformed into themed areas. The hairdressers has a 1950s look to help residents remind them of their past. Vivian Cornelius is the manager. These improvements will hopefully have areas that they will bring back their memory. And it's also about isolation, that people don't feel lost. So um, having all these themed areas and these different rooms with different activities going on will hopefully improve that. In sport, Southampton boss Maurizio Pochettino is in advanced talks with Tottenham to become their new manager. And Andy Murray starts his French Open campaign today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. The weather cloudy with showers or longer spells of rain, which will be heavy at times. A maximum temperature 15 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Uh, I like the old part where you've got a lot of nice green trees, nice park. Yeah, nice. I like it up that part. It's all about where you live. If you smile at somebody, they'll tend to smile back at you, so it's quite nice. A friendly area. And all this week we're featuring Dunstable. It's not as big as other places, but it's quite like a community feel. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Four minutes past seven, or as close as it needs to be. Lots to talk about this morning. Child arrests are down. Dementia care is up. And junior doctors are back in after being out. Yes. Other bits and pieces. What do we call CAF? I mean, Catherine is selfish, I think. It's selfish to have a name that's so long, so many syllables. It's a strong name, it's a traditional name, it's a perfectly nice name. I, I Listen, it's, it's completely adequate. It's just, I, life, I'm so busy and I've got so much to do. I'm of the MTV generation as well, so focus is hard for me. Uh, and by the time I get to the Catherine, uh, I've forgotten who I'm talking to and why I want to talk to you. OK, E, she can play that game. Mine's only two syllables, mate, and only one consonant, so... Catherine. Well, it starts off with a cath... It starts off with a K, which is a hard letter. Mm-hmm. I've got no hard letters in my name. My name is a very soft name. It's very malleable. It's pliable. Yeah, beige. Beige is... Um, I'm so flipping zen this morning. Also, if you allow your kids to play on the phones or the iPads or watch films or anything like that while they're having their lunch or their breakfast, you, know, you see you're at the dinner table and you've got your phone out and they're playing on there. No, no, no! Why would you do that? Justin has found some uh, a, a study and he's gone out to get people's opinions. We'll speak later. You can give me a call on any of those things if you want. 08 459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Police across the three counties are arresting significantly fewer children than they were five years ago. That's according to the Howard League for Penal Reform, who say their figures suggest the number of 10 to 17-year-olds arrested in Hertfordshire has fallen by 67%. Bedfordshire, uh, in Bedfordshire, it's 57%, and the reduction in the Thames Valley is 69%. Well, joining me now is uh, the charity's chief executive, Francis Crook. Good morning, Francis. Good morning. Uh, these reductions seem massive. What, what, what Was there a problem before? Were kids being arrested willy-nilly? Yes, there was a problem. Um, the police have been given targets to arrest people. Uh, that's not necessarily bringing people to justice who've actually committed a crime. It's just arresting people willy-nilly. And, and so it's much easier to arrest a child than it is to arrest a serial burglar, for example. So the police were arresting huge numbers of children completely unnecessarily. And that blights lives. Um, it's very damaging to children. And, of course, it ties up police time unnecessarily. So... 
the reduction in child arrest is much to be welcomed and, and uh, the police forces are doing extremely well in focusing their attention on people who really need to be to, to come into their, their ambit. I'm so naive, Francis. I didn't know you could arrest a 10-year-old. What, what were they doing to get arrested? Well, they were just being 10-year-olds. Oh. A lot of the time, the police have sort of moved into the area of parenting. And as I say, it's actually quite easy to pick up a child who's perhaps being a bit naughty in the street, kicking a ball around. You can arrest them for just any, almost anything. Um, and they were brought into police custody and they were processed in having their DNA taken, their fingerprints oh taken. Some of them were kept overnight and then sent off home. And that was a tick box for the police because they were given a target for arrest. Well, this is completely balmy, of course. Um, um, so the, the significant reduction is much to be welcomed. And police forces like Hertfordshire have put a lot of effort into um, giving their, their frontline police officers professional discretion to resolve things. So, for example, if a child is caught shoplifting, much better to take the child back to the shop, make them apologise, promise not to do it again. Everybody's happy. The shopkeeper feels assured that uh, they're not going to lose their, their stock in future. The child is, is dealt with appropriately parents can be involved it's quick it's cheap it's effective so much better than going through the formal process does that always work though francis because uh, some people listening to this might be thinking well hang on if, if a kid's nicked something then they you know they they should see the full process of the law to stop them doing it if they just get taken back to the shop and they, they give it back they might think phew i got away with that well, the evidence shows that actually resolving things immediately is much better for victims, much better for children and much better for the taxpayer. Um, it m- is much more likely that the child won't do it again. I mean, you've got a uniformed police officer dealing with it professionally and uh, the victim gets an apology, which they want. Um, whereas if you do, if you arrest the child, the victim doesn't see the child, doesn't have any say in it, um, is ignored, doesn't know what's happened, and actually it's much more likely for the child to feel very resentful and angry, and at, once they get caught up in the criminal justice system, they're more likely to behave badly rather than less. So what the police are doing is absolutely right. It's good for victims, it's good for taxpayers, it's good for children, it's good for parents as well who should be taking responsibility. So the number of arrests for um, uh, kind of, you know, just kids being kids is down. Uh, The number of arrests on kids kind of committing crimes is down. Are there actually less crimes happening? Yes, child crime has really significantly dropped. And I think it's partly to do with this much more sensible policing. Um, As I say, we know that... Um, once you've got children involved in the criminal justice system, they're more likely to behave badly rather than turn their lives round. So by reducing unnecessary child arrest, the police are actually reducing crime as well. And so, for example, Hertfordshire, child arrest down by two thirds, Bedfordshire by 57%. This is helping to reduce crime and children are committing fewer crimes. This is fantastic news. Well, uh, Francis, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, if, if what you're saying is correct, then we should be celebrating this. That's uh, uh, Francis uh, Crook there, who is the Howard League for Penal Reform's Chief Executive. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Yeah, I know. Uh, her name was Crook. And we were talking about legal matters. Do you see more people should have names that are connected with their line of work? For example, if um, you're a baker, you should be called... Um, uh, Steve S- Buns. S- Steve Buns. If you're a plumber, you should be called... Joe Pipes. And if you are a gardener, you should be called... Matt Leaf. <laughs> it's just an idea. I'm a massive gambler. Wow, that's an ambition to make on the radio out of nowhere. My surname? I don't Kelly know. Kelly Betts. You see? It's not, a prof- it's not kind of a. Oh, I like the fact you're doing the Bueller gag and you don't really get it. Yeah, well, I do get it. I once knew a police press officer called Des Lawless. Oh. Yeah. Mm, it doesn't quite... And there was a sing... Robin Banks, I'm not even joking. Did he sing Amadeus? Um, we got some... You've, you've got baby in German for me. Yeah, ich habe baby von der Deutsch. Go on, then. I don't know. So, so das baby, baby. Baby, so they weren't completely wrong. So das baby 
is a baby. Okay. But I can imagine the Germans would say, why are you referring to a child? Surely you're talking about your sweetheart. But there are so many other... Das Kind child. A kind. Das, oh, das kind, kind is a child. Das... I've got to be so careful how I say this. Um, there's umlauts das there. Schätzen. Schätzen. Is your baby honey, darling, sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. So they should be singing Schätzen. Schätzen, Schätzen. Schätzen, Patak. <laughs> The suckling, the infant baby suckling. Oh, that's a suckling, a baby arms. No, we're talking about an actual child. Go there. on. I want to see what you do. Go on. Uh, Kleiner is your little one or your baby. Yeah. Johnny Vernon Smith could tell you this. He yeah. speaks von der Deutsch. Does he? That's yeah. good. Sir. The pooper. <laughs> I'm waiting for the next one. Uh, the Mietzer. Oh, that's your little puss. <laughs> the mi- the Mietzer. Pussy, well, puss, you call broad. broad. Dog. And der Piccolo. Well, that's, that's, um, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, the Germans... Who says the Germans aren't fun? I like the Germans. I've got, I've got anything... Hey, the Macaulay Culkin in the paper again. I, I like the Germans, but I prefer the Dutch. The Dutch hate the Germans. Well, I know. Oh, are you German? No, I'm Dutch! Well, it's like when the, Australia, when the Americans say to us, are you Australian? No. No, I'm English! <laughs> I say yes. Can't hear a reffing thing. Oh. Mm? This uh, uh, this story is funny, but I'm, I, I don't know if it's meant to be funny. Maybe it's not funny. This story isn't funny. This story's tell sick. Me, tell me and I'll decide whether it's funny or not. This is a sick story. Hurry up. A deaf... A deaf football team faced double relegation. After losing all but one of their games. Sad so far, actually. Well, it happens. It's sport. Because their players couldn't hear the referee's whistle. Oh, so what do you think of that? Yeah, that should... That, that, why would have that got to that point? They should say, <laughs> I'm not going to whistle. Instead, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to shoot one of, of you. Jumps. And when one of you collapses on the floor with a bullet in the foot, that means the game's over. Surely they were playing other deaf players. They managed. Yeah, it sounds that's... like sour grapes to me. Yeah. Well, why would they be playing other deaf players? There can't be that many deaf players. Why not? They're sporty. Why didn't they just think it through before doing it and then writing about it in the papers? So, are you... Sorry, I'm confused. Are you saying this is or this isn't a funny story? I think that... It's not a funny... It's already a story. Well, it's just... Well, oh, that's disrespectful to deaf people now, is it? They're not newsworthy. No, I'm not saying that. I think it's sour grapes. From the part of the deaf people? I don't think they can have sour grapes. Yeah, they can. If If anyone's entitled to have sour grapes, it's them. Why? They're playing Come football on. like anyone else. That's why they're trying to pull a fast one like any other footballer. Why would they not... Why would not being able to... Hang on a second, you're right. Why would not being able to hear the, the referee's whistle mean that you lose? You don't need to hear a whistle to score goals. By? How many did they lose by? Like, probably loads. Well, then, there you go. There's your answer. Um, they were fa- their, their goalkeeper was oh. secretly on the other team. Here we go. 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 Here we go, guys. I've got to the truth of this story by reading a little bit further. The football club, Birmingham Deaf FC, were also deducted nine points for failing to turn up for three games. Oh, slackers. A player from Red Star Galaxy who beat them 4-2 and then 9-3 said... The players just carried on running with the ball whenever there was a stoppage. They must have been exhausted. South African. <laughs> when the half time whistle blew, they knew nothing about it. One player even went on and put the ball in the net and ran off celebrating. You had, you... To, you had to grab them and point them at the ref. It was very difficult. Do you still work there on a weekend? Yes, I do. Yeah. Little suggestion. Don't do the voice. Oh, rude. 08459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading southbound, looking very slow at the moment between the Newport Pagnell Services and Junction 13 for Bedford Road. Also on the M1 further down, queuing at the moment between Junction 12. What's the latest? Whoa, 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 no, no, that's not... The, what the hell is going on there? just got off. Your computer's <laughs> gone off? just frozen and gone off. What was it? I also heard, like, a whooshing noise, like a demon or something. 
Oh, yeah, I think that was a demon in the computer. Wow. Breaking my just, computer. Just make it up. I apologise. Um, What's oh, happening on the trains? Terrible, wouldn't no, it? No, okay, come on, who cares? <laughs> What's happening on the trains? Um, at the moment, it's looking good. Nothing's happening. How, well, how do you no know that? Nothing's happening on your or computer. Delays. Well, just as it, before it crashed, I oh, had a look. Right. Oh, terrible. We wouldn't have got this with... Apologies. We wouldn't have got this with Peterson. <laughs> Is that a person? That's a person, isn't it? Uh, Justin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 we wouldn't have got this with Peter. We wouldn't have got this with Glass up. Glass up. Glass up. Glass up. Glass up. Glass up. And even Adam Glim was. was uh, oh, no. I knew you'd bring him even up. Even Adam Glim the legend. was. The legend. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Travel that's, legend. That's never been said. Don't worry, we'll speak to you later <laughs> on. Don't panic. Don't panic. Where's my heads? Where's my heads? There's my heads. It's Tuesday the 27th of May. I'm Ian Lee and these are your headlines. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. BBC Three Counties Radio. Roberto Peroni. Gardeners wanting to rid their spring flower beds of snails can ditch the beer traps and eggshells and instead develop a strong throwing arm instead. Weekdays from three. I don't think there's any ethical dilemma about throwing them as opposed to killing them. It's clearly better to throw them. Hertfordshire police are warning drivers to take extra precautions with their vehicles following a rise in the number of cars stolen using specialised hacking equipment. Two thirds of teachers say poor writing has prevented them giving the marks a student truly deserves. Roberto Peroni. I do the animal stories. I also do the space stories, apparently. Weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. Now, years ago, if you started to develop dementia, you were either cared for quietly by a family member or shuffled off to a retirement home. In both cases, you're probably left to, uh, well, not really do a lot and just uh, sit around in your pyjamas. Thankfully, things are changing. One home in Bedford has used a government grant to give a communal areas a 1950s makeover. The idea being that surrounding people with things they remember from their youth can bring back their spark, if only for a short time. Well, I'm joined now by Roger Sewell, whose wife had dementia and was cared for him at home. Good morning to you, Roger. Good morning. Well, when did you... I don't know your wife's name. I do apologise. Uh, it was Leone. Leone. When did you realise that Leone was, uh, was changing and was, was getting poorly? Well, it was, it was about 12 years before... Uh, uh, about 12 years before. Mm. Yes. And how did it manifest itself? Was it kind of small, subtle things to start oh, with? Oh, indeed, yes. And uh, it was repeating things and, uh, 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 and, uh, and gener- generally forgetful, mm. losing things, and um, very well hidden, up, hidden, you know. She was aware of this happening and, uh, uh, and she tried to cover it up, you know, this sort of thing. And you made the decision to care for Leone at home. Yes. Why was that so important for you? Well, uh, we've been married for uh, over 50 years, and it was a, a commitment to each other. And I think that, um, that, was, that was the main thing. And I didn't want uh, to just to abrogate my responsibilities as a, as a partner. Uh, my granddad uh, had uh, dementia, and uh, I saw how devastating it was towards the end. It must have been hard work for you, for you both. It, it was hard work, it, uh, it, and it became progressively hard, harder as, as time went on, um, both physically and mentally. Um, and... Um, one, one, but one, one did it. One did it. But that doesn't mean to say everybody can do it. I, I fortunately had good health, and I was able to manage her, and therefore um, that that was all right. But for people who who can't do that, I I wouldn't judge them at all. They might find it hard. Did you have help, Roger? Did, did I don't know, did, was there social help? Did you have friends and relatives who helped out, or, or were you doing this mainly on your own? No, I had a lot of help. 
Um, I had help from uh, the uh, Borough of Bedford from some social services, um, which one had to fight for all the way, but there was help available. There was Bedford has been very lucky in some very far-sighted people who have set up organizations which, which do help uh, people with dementia and their carer, because I think you have to take them together. They're, they're not separate units, and this is the mistake that is now um, happening, that, that there are two separate units, but they're not. They're one body, the carer and the person with dementia. They're, they're a unit, and they need to be cared for together. Did you have any tricks? Roger, uh, uh, and by tricks I mean kind of little aids that helped Leone stay in the present or, or, or be more aware of, of where she was and what was going on. Yes, uh, we had uh, music is one of the m- most marvellous things for people with dementia because it's something which enters the whole body and soul and uh, music is very important. Um, memorabilia um, photographs but as the d- disease develops, it h- becomes harder to relate to it. Uh, but but to, begin, to begin with, that and being active, being, going out for walks and those sort of things, keeping, keeping active is very important. So you pr- I, I would imagine that, that uh, this idea that this, uh, this uh, care home is using of, of, of kind of creating a sort of 1950s environment in one of the rooms... Um, does that sound like a good idea to you? Yes, if for, for the initial stages. Yeah. For the initial stages, this, this is very important. Uh, or, and, but you can do that at home mm. by having uh, a memory box where you have uh, a box where you have all the things from your past that you can find, photographs, articles, and you can go through these. Roger, uh, it sounds like you did a cracking job. I really appreciate you sharing your story with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roger, thanks. Uh, Roger Shaw, who looked after his wife, Leone, joined now by Dr Helen, uh, Helen Donovan, a consultant clinical psychologist working in Bedfordshire and Luton. Good morning to you, Doctor. What are, well, you heard there, Roger, talking about the memory box. We've heard about this care home where they've kind of recreated sort of 1950s environment. What, what, how does that work? What are, what are the benefits of having those familiar things around you? Well, I think um, it's important to realise, obviously, that people with the most common forms of dementia will have problems with their short-term memory or their recent memories, whereas their longer-term memories or their remote memories will be more intact. So, you know, when we're trying to have conversations with one another, often we talk about what's happened recently, but for people with dementia, that will be more difficult. So having items around them that remind them of times and experiences that are very familiar will... Uh, make things more accessible and make conversations easier and more familiar. Roger uh, was was, uh, saying, I thought he told his story excellently, that um, this kind of really worked in the earlier stages and and by the later stages it's too late and that has very little impact. Does that sound about right? Well, often as dementia progresses um, it becomes more difficult even for people to communicate or to direct their attention. Um, But even once people's conversation and things becomes more limited often just having items to jointly look at or hold or things you know he mentioned his mem- the memory box um that can still be quite meaningful for individuals as well and i think it's important not to give up on mm. ways to interact and things to focus on together here's something helen that uh, was mentioned the other day here and it kind of struck me as quite interesting my mum hasn't got dementia but she's got a degenerative illness uh, and she forgets so many things, really forgetful. She's in a care home, and quite often she'll phone me up and ask where she is or when she's going home and all those things. And I've mm. spent a lot of the time saying, well, this is where you are, this is why you're here. And someone suggested that maybe the best thing to do is to kind of indulge her fantasies a little bit because she'll have forgotten it the next day. What's your take on that? Well, I think there's there's an ethical issue there, and people have different feelings and thoughts about that Mm. Um, rather than and I think one of the things is that we don't want to get into what might be perceived as lying um, because that that can feel deceitful or misguiding to people but uh, often just redirecting people's attention to something that helps them feel reassured Uh, Um, it can be really helpful uh, reminding them of something familiar talking about something that feels familiar um, 
that that can be very helpful. One of the things I liked when I I heard Vivian speaking earlier mm. on your program, and she talked about the fact that previously the corridors might have been quite bland, nothing there. Um, so just the idea that there are things which would spark people's interest that give you a focus of attention. Of course, if you're in an environment with not much in it, you that increases people's um, their discomfort and they're they're wondering about where am I? What's what's going on here? Whereas if you've got things around that help people feel interested or stimulated, it, it can provide a focus of attention, something to talk about. Where and so it might reduce that sense of disorientation and worry that occurs for people in unfamiliar environments. Helen, I appreciate your time. Thank you. That's Dr. Helen Donovan, co- consultant, clinical psychologist, working in Bedfordshire and Luton. It's interesting, isn't it? By the way, we had a text in from uh, Peter saying it's not just old people that get dementia. Thank you for that. It's absolutely right. It's interesting, isn't it? I, I do kind of wonder about what things I kind of point out to my mum and what things I don't point out. I um, had to tell her several times that my dad's dead, her ex-husband. And a couple of times she's got really upset. When's, when's, when's your dad going to come see me? He's not, she's not seen him for years. And you go, oh, he's dead. And she gets upset. She, she she's kind of, finding out. She's finding out again. For the, you know, for, or where am I? Oh, you, you live in a care home because you can't look after yourself. Boom, she gets really upset. So is there any harm in going, oh, yeah, no, dad's fine. He's, you know, he's, he'll, he'll be all right. I'll, I'll see him next week. Is there any harm in that? Because it must be so painful to have to relearn horrible things over and over again. Towards the end of my grandmother's life, she was convinced that she was at school and that she was waiting for her dad to pick her up. Mm. It's difficult to know whether to just say, yeah, I'll be here in a minute, where she'd feel better and reassured. Yeah. Or to explain to her that what she thought was real wasn't real. I mean, yeah. it's difficult, isn't it? You think, which way do I upset them more? My mum, quite, quite often, and I, I, tend not, I, I never answer the phone to my mum late at night because it means she's really tired and is, is uh, um, you know, going to be rambling. But she quite often phones up in tears saying, Ian, I want you to buy me a car and buy me a house. I'm moving out. Uh, and my, my, I have two little tricks now is to say, OK, well, let's talk about, talk about it tomorrow, by which time generally it's gone. Or I start talking about the boys. So, OK, well, do, in a minute. But the boys today, you should have seen them at the swimming pool there and it kind of is enough it's a distraction, to, it's a distraction. 08459 four double five five double five. would love to hear your stories on that and Peter thank you for your text BBC Three Counties Radio let's get the travel news now travel news for beds hearts and bugs BBC Three Counties Radio the M1 heading southbound, very slow at the moment between Junction 15 for Northampton and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. Had two calls from Leslie and Phil for that, so thank you very much. Queuing on the M1 as well between Junction 12 for Flittick and Junction 11 at Dunstable Road. The M25's queuing as well, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 21, the M1, and Junction 18 at Chorleywood. Taking a look in Harpingdon, rather heavy at the moment on St Albans Road at Station Road. And the A1 is looking rather slow between the Holiday Inn and Stirling Corner. So far on the trains, not seeing any reported problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 7.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets and junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Southampton boss Maurizio Pochettino is in advanced talks with Tottenham to become their new manager. Spurs have been looking for a new manager since sacking Tim Sherwood early this month. Pochettino took over at Southampton in January 2013. Fleetwood won the League Two playoff final, beating Burton 1-0 at Wembley. Three years after winning the League Two final with Stevenage, former Borough skipper Mark Roberts capped in the Lancashire side to promotion. Unbelievable. Look at them scenes there, the fans. You know, they've, they've come in numbers here today. I don't... They've not been to Wembley in 30 years. This club, you know, it keeps going from strength to strength. It's an incredible story and it's just not stopping yet. Some massive games next year. I mean, you know, we'll celebrate this moment, we'll enjoy this moment because we've worked so hard for it over the season since, you know, day one of pre-season. But, you know, League One, we're looking forward to it already. 
And Wickham striker Stephen Craig has signed a new one-year contract. The 33-year-old joined Wanderers last summer. In tennis, a major shock at the French Open with the third seed and Australian Open champion Stan Wawrinka losing in four sets to Spain's Guillermo Garcia Lopez. Andy Murray starts today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. It's a special place. You know, all of the, the, the slams are special in, in different ways, but, you know, I've always, always enjoyed coming here and played you know the best play court tennis of my career has normally come uh, here at this event and yeah I'm, I'm very very excited to be back and in Formula One the Mercedes boss Nicky Lauda says he will talk to Lewis Hamilton before the next race in Canada to smooth over the tense situation in the team the Hertfordshire driver accused teammate Nico Rosberg of deliberately going off the Monaco track to stop him challenging for pole in Saturday's qualifying session with Rosberg then going on to win Sunday's race BBC Three Counties News and Sport the next full bulletin is at eight Simon what was the name of that racing driver Nicky? Louder. What was the name of that racing driver? Louder. Hey! hey. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is yeah, baby. Ray. BBC Three Counties Come Radio. On, guys. You know. You know. That's the best joke in the world. Guys! Guys! <laughs> that's the best thing you've ever said. <laughs> that is in the podcast. Yeah. This bit me now, going on about it, is in the podcast. Oh. And um, you guys praising me, which you're going to do shortly, oh. is in the podcast. Do, the, do it. But what was his name, though? What was his name? Did you do a joke? Did you do a joke? I'm not sure. <laughs> Louder. Did huh? you do a joke? Did you do a joke, Ian? A little bit of wings come out! <laughs> this is the best thing we've ever done! Wee. This is the joke! The joke is now bigger than all of us. What joke, though? <laughs> what joke? What was his name? <laughs> Louder. What was his name? <laughs> Matt, do you want to play? No, I think you're cracking up, Ian. What was his name, Matt? What joke? <laughs> right, what was the... Re- si- were you listening to Simon Oxley doing the news? No, no, no. OK, he mentioned a racing car driver called Nicky, and I got... Ca- what was... Nicky Ladder. No. What was it? What, what? what was it? What was his name? Nicky Ladder. No, what was his surname? <laughs> You've really muffed this up, Matt. Yeah. Nicky Ladder. No, I'm... You're... Oh, for goodness sakes. Who lets this guy on? Yeah. <laughs> it's you're supposed to say just louder, and I'm supposed to shout. All right, you shout then. Well, will in a minute. I'll give you a bunch of fives as well. Well. What was the racing car driver's name? Nicky Louder. No, Matt! <laughs> you. Oh, Kath, you explain to him. Maybe a woman's touch well, is I don't what he know. Needs. I don't get it. No, what was I his don't name? Get it louder. Either. What was his What's name? His name? <laughs> right, Matt. Yes. So, you. Right, what was his name, Matt? Louder. What was his name, Matt? <laughs> Keep going. You're not catching me out here. Well, I just did. <laughs> hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Because I, I, I know you've got an important point to make, but I think this is even more important. You know, Ian, you sound more like Chris Evans every day. Yeah, you said that yesterday, Matt. Ken? And I'm going to turn it off. Good. I'm going to come and, t- I'm going to come and turn your radio to... Ra- Ken? What? What was that racing car driver's name? Uh, Matt, you uh, tell him. Uh, Lada. Matt. Yes. What would they call a male prostitute? Whoa! 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 whoa, 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 whoa what the heck? That, where did that come that, from? That is terrible. That, that is. is where, where, Ken, what, what on earth made you think that at seven thirty-five <laughs> it will be appropriate to say that? What? Get louder! You were talk you were talking on Sky News about someone's pubic hair. Right, right. don't care for goodness sakes! Right, what, 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 is he, what do you think this is? Oh my oh God. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I apologise for the last uh, two minutes of radio. That was... Draw a line under it. Just say to Matt, what did you phone for? Matt, what did you phone for, mate? Well, you're talking about the dementia. Yes. Back to, uh, the music is the greatest thing in the world. Yes. Dementia. Because I had it with Margaret and she loved the music. Well, did and she like the same music that you like? A bit of daytime well, friends yeah, and nighttime she loved lovers? Kenny Rogers and... Uh, 
Johnny Cash. Oh, good bit uh, of country. Steve Earle. Yeah. Bon can, I, can I ask, why, why did you and Margaret, how did you and Margaret get into country music? Well, we, I've always been into country music, but Margaret used to love Matt Monroe and people like that. She loved all-time music, and yeah. I, I really pushed her onto music. Yeah. When she got the dementia, she had to, you've got to have something to fall back on to take the pressure out of you. Yeah. Because you're under pressure all the time. But if you have the music, I used to do a lot of singing, karaoke, oh, and all that. Blimey, I bet that was awful. It. I bet that was awful. No, it wasn't. She I bet you were it. terrible. And she was a great singer, so... I bet she was wonderful, but Matt, yeah. I mean, I've heard you sing, mate. I wouldn't inflict that on my worst enemy. Well, neither would I on you. Good, good lad. And well, when, she, when she listened to the music, when she was poorly, yeah. d- uh, did it just soothe her, or would you say it took her back to a, to a different time? Yes, it would, like she had the Drifters were one of her favourite groups, uh, and she could remember all the things going back, but uh, to get her happy and really relaxed, the music was the best. Yeah. It was brilliant, and yeah. I still do it now. I go to the home now, yeah. and I still sing along. Oh, mate. Girl. Matt, why? Seriously, those people, haven't they suffered enough? <laughs> do you, you want to make things worse for them? No, no, we have a bit of a comedy thing. I like to do me and Mrs. Brown. I go around and we have a chat. Hang on, you're, great. you're Mrs. Brown? What the, the, what, the comedy show? You know Mrs. Brown. You know what she's like. You, what, do you dress up as her? No, 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 no. I don't need to because I swear <laughs> enough. <laughs> Matt! Don't you dare start listening to Chris Evans, Matt, or there will be trouble, OK? OK, mate. Thank yeah. you very much indeed, Matt. Are we allowing Ken back on? We're going to allow Ken back on, despite... If he, watch, if he watches what he says, just, just, let's give him a chance. Flipping that, Ken. You've dropped, you've dropped two Ds. What? You've dropped two D-bombs. Oh, my... Category Ds. You were talking about it on... No, I was talking about it on Skype. I didn't use the words. Well, what do you... You want to draw pictures in? Well, there was, there was a story. There was a story in the papers at the weekend that a uh, high street um, uh, chicken place. One of the uh, customers was rude, so one of the people working in the high street chicken place put some. I said intimate body hair yeah. on the chicken. But that could be anywhere. Well, I think we, no, well, then, intimate. You know where it is. You've drawn the conclusion. It's the you know. The, call a spade a spade. I'll call you band in a minute. And then you go, what, what do you get? What do you, what do you call a male... Bro- you can't tell jokes like that. We've got, That's a nice thing to talk about on a Sunday morning. Well, what about on a Tuesday morning? Talking about men having to sell their bodies to, to feed, you know, their children. And may I remind you two gentlemen, the children are off school. Yeah, exactly. Which means no-one's listening. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh. Fair play. Fair play, Kels. Nice one. That's it. What do you want, Ken? I don't know. I don't know what I ran out for now. Thanks very much. Let's go to Justin Dealey. Justin. <laughs> Can I just say, yes. uh, a few people recently have said to me, that Ken, yeah. is he real? Yeah. Is it somebody well, inside the building? No, I can I confirm on. right Ask now, him. he is yeah. a real character. Well, let's, let's... Ken? What? Are you real? Yeah, of course I'm real. Are you not, you're not um, Barry Caffrey, are you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, you're not... Um, you're not Tara, are you? Because <laughs> she's got quite a manly voice at certain times. <laughs> No? Do you know what I would love? Yeah, go on. A picture of Ken. Yeah. No, no, no. What, Ken? What? Can we have a picture of you? What do you look like? Signed. Do you know what I imagine? What? Tony Curtis. No, without the wig. There is. Are you small? No. Where? Are you round? <laughs> Talking about my private party. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Oh, 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 Has he been sm- wow. smoking the old hubbly bubbly this morning? What on earth is going on with Incredibly, him? Incredibly, yes, he is real. <laughs> Oh, man, alive. I can only apologise to the listeners of the radio show and, indeed, the listeners of the podcast. We had to include that just so that you you get to understand what I have to deal with every single day uh, of my life. Crazy. Crazy Crazy guy. Crazy, 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 crazy guy. (laughs) Ken's a crazy, 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 crazy guy. Woo! Woo! Yeah! (laughs) Ken's a crazy, 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 crazy guy. Another key change. Ken's a crazy, 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 crazy guy. Kate, you're not joining him. No, it's silly. Well, what do you mean it's silly? We're just having a little bit of, bit of bounce. I think it's silly. And this I'm is... looking at Dolly Parton's secret tattoos. <laughs> this is why, uh, Kate, that when we all go out for meals and stuff, we don't invite you. She's not a Kate. I can't, not to you, I'm not. I can't not. take her as a Kate. 
How can you? T- what way would you take her? I prefer Boyle. Oh. Oh, I'd see that. that if, if I were going to change any part KB? of your name, it would be the Boyle. What about if we call her KB? Two. She's you. KB2. You're KB1. It's a tough one, isn't it, Just? It's very tough. What's a call, what, what do you call a member of the team who's a little bit of an outsider and doesn't fit in? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, why don't you call him uh, Ken2? Ken's part of the team. My name's Ken. <laughs> had a friend Actually, called Ben. Don't he had a pen. You know wasn't very good. And you scored it five out of ten. <laughs> Right, Justin. Yes, boss. We've got you on. And what was this survey you found? Uh, almost nine out of ten children aged <laughs> at six to ten, they're using TVs, iPads, no. mobile phones, no. computers, video games and radios whilst having dinner. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. When, you got your, when your kids are having your dinner, um, let me have a think. Um, why don't you sit with them and have a conversation? Yep. I haven't got time. I haven't got time. It's half an hour out of your life. If you haven't got time to sit with your kids and ask them what they did at school that day, then why did you have children? I mean, you made the point earlier on, if you allow your children to watch television during dinner time, you're a bad parent. You put it out there, didn't you? Yeah, totally. So I've been talking to parents this morning about this. Um, um, The second person coming up, some very awkward pauses here, but um, I've been finding out um, whether parents allow their children to watch TV or play with iPads during dinner time... And Ian, here's what's happened. Christine, you've got an eight-year-old daughter. At dinner time, is everything switched off so you have dinner as a family? Yeah, yep. Everything's switched off because I don't like watching TV when I'm eating. I just don't like watching TV. I'm being brought up like it. So if I've been brought up like it, I'd rather have my daughter being brought up like it. So does she say to you, come on, Mum, let nope. me watch the TV? No. Nope. She's pretty good. Um, Ian saying this morning that if you let your child play on iPads, computer games, let them watch TV during dinner, that you are a bad parent. Would you go along with that? Um, yeah, I would actually, because I don't agree with people letting their daughters or sons watch TV when they're eating their dinner because they're bringing them bad habits. Alex, you have two children. How old are your children? Ten and fifteen. Now, do you let them watch TV, play on iPads, video games during dinner? Only in television. Um, no iPad or video games during dinner. Uh, the television's on in the front room and we're sat at the, at, the di- at the dining table but they can just turn around and watch the television between mouthfuls. I'm not telling you how to be a parent, but uh, why don't you turn that TV off? Um, basically because uh, more arguments if we do. Stops the arguments. So it's not worth the hassle? Yeah, basically. So, I mean, do you not talk at all then during dinner time as, yeah. as a family? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we talk. You know, we can turn telly off, but... but you never do. But not usually, it's usually on. Ian saying this morning... If you're a parent and you allow your children to watch TV during dinner time and, and play on computer games, you're a bad parent. Um, that's his view. You're somebody who, who lets their children watch TV during dinner time. Are you a bad parent? I hope not. Um, don't think my kids would say so. They, t- they, have a, they turn around and watch TV in between mouthfuls. There is the quote of the year wow. so far. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. The thing is, kids learn behaviour from their, from their parents. So, yeah, the first few times you do it, you might get a strop. You might get a strop for a week or so. Mm. They'll get over it. And if they get too stroppy... Well, my, my kids... Uh, the, the th- I have two threats now. I have two threats. The first one is, I'll put the TV in the garage then. Because I've done that before. I've, I've unplugged the TV in front of them and I've locked it in the garage. Good for you. They said, well, you know, if you start behaving, you'll get it back. So that's a threat. I had a great threat um, yesterday. My boy, my eldest boy, he had uh, a little uh, bowl full of raisins, nice raisins. Hmm. Threw them across the floor. He didn't. He said, I don't want these. Threw them across the floor. I went, right, go and pick them up. I was really zen. He said, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And he started drawing a picture. It was a really good picture, actually. Yeah. I said, go, go and pick them up. I'm not going to do it. Oh. I said, right, OK, well, I'm t- I turned the TV off. Right, OK. I don't want to watch the TV. Fine, pick them up. Not going to do it. I picked up my phone. So right, I'm going to call your teacher up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why are you doing that? I said, no, I'm just going to call your teacher. Let's call her Mrs. Jones. I'm going to call Mrs. Jones up and I'm going to tell her, and I'm dialing the number. I haven't got a clue what her number is. I'm going to tell her, no, no, no. Put the phone to my ear. 
Hello, is that Mrs. Jones? He was over on the floor picking up those raisins and sultanas. Oh, genius. Apples, coconuts, bananas. <laughs> and he put them all in the bowl. And I went, just to let you know that, Ale- uh, that my son is being a very, very good boy. And I put the phone down and... Uh, Fantastic got, got threat. It, it yeah. worked. It's a good one. It's a good yeah, one, Justin. I like it. Justin, thank you very much. We'll speak to you later on. 08459 four double five five double five. How do you keep your kids in check? We've got fairies. Sorry? We've got fairies. Hey. There's a door in my skirting board. Oh, I've seen those doors, yeah. And if there is... Is nonsense, the fairies yeah. leave. Yeah. So the door disappears. And does that work? Yeah. It's a good one, though, isn't it? So that happens. Um, I also withdraw privileges, you know, prison rules. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, in your situation, the colouring would have gone. Yeah. And I would have started ignoring them. Yeah. And saying, oh, the ignoring's not, a good one. If you're not going to be nice to me, I'm yeah. not going to be nice to you. Yeah, the ignoring's a good one. Yeah. What I've noticed as well is when one's been really naughty, the yeah, other one, one starts sucking up yes. and getting all the cuddles. Yes, yes, yes. How do you deal with your children? Let's have the tricks, please. I threatened to phone his teacher, and um, I, well, I've, I've put the TV in the garage before. It will happen again. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading southbound very slow at the moment between Junction 15 for Northampton and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. We've been getting quite a few calls for that, so thank you. The M1 southbound also slow between 13 at Salford Road and Junction 11 Dunstable Road. The M25 heading anti-clockwise, queuing at the moment on the sensors between Junction 21, the M1, and 18 at Chorley Wood. In Brickett Wood, very slow moving on the North Orbital Road, just off the M25, and also on the M40 London bound. That's looking heavy as well between Junction 5 for Stoke and Church and and Junction 4 for the handy cross at roundabouts. So far on the trains, no reporting problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. Ken? What? Y- you're still there? It's my poem, poem. You want to do the poem now? Yes, without you touching that knob. Without touching your knob on there. Go on then, quickly. I, my poem. Quickly do your poem. In the road, they boldly stand. We haven't got time, Ken. It's the news. Seven four. We'll try and get in before the end of the show. Seven forty-seven. It's uh, Tuesday, the twenty-seventh of May. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Let's get the latest weather now. It's with Kelly. I'm sorry. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. You're welcome. Cool and cloudy with heavy rain at times. Today, most areas will start off cool and cloudy with showery outbreaks of rain. The rain will affect most parts throughout much of the day with occasional heavier... But Ken? Yes. Hi. A- occasional heavier bursts at times. Ken, the maximum, maximum temperature will be 18 degrees Celsius. Ooh, Tonight, I'm Ken... Here, what? On the back on. Yep. Be cloudy with further persistent rain again, with occasional heavier bursts at times. Uh, Wednesday will rain. Thursday will rain. Friday will probably rain. We've got a lot going for us, have we? On all of those days, we probably still won't have got your poem. Oh, no, no. In the road, they bravely stand. stand. Every weekday morning. My show's called The JVS Show. Nine o'clock in the morning on BBC Three Counties Radio. Jonathan Vernon-Smith. I deal with the consumer problems that affect people all over beds, hearts and bucks. And I said, well, I didn't come all this way to be looking at a broken down hotel. Those companies, those councils, those organisations that are letting people down. This guy turned around and said to me that they're not prepared to pay me and I said, so you're forcing me to take action. And he said, good luck and put the phone down on me. I get my teeth into them. Oh, Jonathan, I'll start. We don't know what to do. Deal with them and hopefully get results for you, the consumers. And it got so convoluted, I thought there's only one person to sort this out. The JVS Show on BBC Three Counties Radio. Just, um, just call me Supermanny. Hey? Just call me Supermanny. Why? Well, uh, April sent an email talking about kids having tablets and watching TV when they're eating their food. Good morning, Ian. You are, of course, right on this one. Since you raised this about a year ago, I went home that day and set a new rule. At dinner time, the TV is off, no tablets, and for us adults, no phones. It's been harder for the boys, but now we have conversations. It's much better. Thanks, Ian. Ian? Yes? 
Do you check that there's no hairs in the dinner? Whoa! Ken, for goodness sakes. What on earth? Is Ken co-hosting the show with me this morning? Well... It feels like it, doesn't it? It does a bit, but a flipping heck, his input is a little on the uh, blue side, isn't it's a, it? It's a little bit adult, a bit raunchy. Something for the dads. Now, you may remember that trainee doctors were removed from the paediatric unit at Bedford Hospital last July over fears that a child could be harmed. The problems were caused by a lack of senior staff to supervise junior doctors. Well, now uh, Health Education East of England, the body that withdrew the trainees in the first place, says they can now return from August following a successful inspection. Joined now by Dr Peter Wilkinson, who is part of the inspection team. He's also director of the local GP training scheme. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Do you know what, Peter? For a second, I panicked. My my father-in-law is uh, uh, a doctor. He's also called Dr Peter Wilkinson. And for a second, I was was worried it was going to be him, and he'd tell me off for doing a childish radio show. I'm glad it's not. How can we be sure the inspection got to the bottom of exactly what's wrong? Um, Well, first of all, I'm confident I'm not your father, so rest reassured on that. That's a relief. Um, The the inspection was uh, actually carried out by the GMC, General Medical Council, and they reviewed the system in Bedford to ensure that uh, they were confident that we could uh, provide excellent training for our junior doctors and that this was a sustainable process for the future. The East of England deanery also uh, were present at that uh, review uh, and they also were extremely confident that uh, what we said we could do was indeed the case. For junior doctors to complain that they felt they worked in, quote, an unsafe way, that's very serious, isn't it? It's so important that the working environment is one in which junior doctors feel that they can talk freely about their circumstances and that if there are any issues that they have, that the channels of communication are open and that they know that they're going to be heard and that we're going to do something about it. And the current uh, increased resources that have been put in, uh, I believe, are exactly the ones that are required to to protect their future. We want junior doctors to enjoy their experience. Mm. We need them to stay locally. Many of our current GPs have come through the training programme. We we can't uh, tolerate a situation where they are finding that they're getting substandard training. Training has to be excellent, and we believe that it will be exactly that. Peter, is is it uh, resources, or is it the the attitude that that primarily had to be changed? Because we did hear stories of urgent phone calls to to senior doctors being ignored and, and people's lives being put at risk, didn't we? As we all know, the the two go hand in hand. Uh, If you have adequate resources, people have the time and the opportunity uh, to be able to make education a high priority. Um, And uh, I believe that with the extra resources that have gone in, uh, there is now every reason to uh, believe that uh, we're able to provide um, prompt um, responses to any concerns that junior doctors have. Education, I think, is a window into... Uh, the service that we're providing, and, and the two go together. I, I think if one is improved, then uh, the other will undoubtedly follow suit. Peter, what, what does this mean for the long-term future of the unit, do you think? Do you, do you think it, it will progress and grow and will be uh, as safe as we all hope it will be? The long-term uh, future of what, what sorry? Of the, uh, of the unit, the paediatric unit. Of the paediatric unit. Uh, yes, well, I think that um, what's been remarkable is how well local people have worked together. Everybody's been involved in this, so parents, families, uh, local politicians, uh, the media, GPs, the clinical community, everyone's been involved, and everyone's been pulling in the same direction. That, that's terrific to see. And there is a healthcare review going on at the moment, which will include paediatrics, and we're looking to try to ensure that the local service is as good as it can be and it's accessible locally, uh, that we have the expertise, that we're able to subspecialise within the paediatric department. And I think there are uh, really strong reasons for us to be very positive about the future of, uh, of the paediatric department. Dr Peter Wilkinson, thank you very much for your time. Joined now by Dave Hodgson, the Mayor of Bedford. Dave, we've talked about this so many times. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on the situation now? Well, of course, it's, it's excellent news that the uh, the doctors in training are coming back to Bedford Hospital. But we saw with the uh, the independent report looking back several years that this was not a, a, an isolated case. And I think the hospital has and needs to have le- learned lessons about making sure it, it actually listens to what people say. Um, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that Peter thinks that uh, we're moving forward, and I believe we are as well. But, you know, what we need to do is we need to have the full paediatric service back now, and that's including the inpatients, 
which still hasn't returned to Bedford Hospital. Do we got any idea when or if that's going to happen? No, I'm, I'm worried because I think I hear, I hear a lot of people in the health service say the 23-7 um, model is acceptable, 23 hours a day. You know, and that still means that if you have to have inpatient for your child, you've got to mi- travel 20 miles to take them to hospital to go and visit them and for the family to visit them, and I don't think that's acceptable. Do you think the lessons have been learnt, Dave? I think so, and um, I, it, from what I see, I think they've been learned, and I think the hospital is moving forward uh, incredibly. The CQC results show that it's uh, at one of the best hospitals in the region in terms of the, the quality of care. I worry about the reviews. I mean, this next review, remember we looked at a very um, small but critical case of doctors in training, and we've now got a full review of the hospital that's through an eye ward from 3.2 million on top of the, uh, the, the aborted um, and uh, discredited Healthy Together, which uh, adds up to 5.4 million on reviewing uh, what's happening. That could have been spent investing in our hospital, and I think it should have been. It's a lot of money, isn't it, to be spent on, on kind of looking at things that you hope would be all right. Dave, let, let's keep our fingers crossed that this is this does signal a move in the right direction for Bedford Hospital. It's had a tough 18 months, two years. We, 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 we're still not quite sure where it's going to go. That's Dave Hodgson, the Mayor of Bedford. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. Kath, totally rocking out to the uh, the old jingle there. Are you? Are any it's of good you? Beat. Sorry, it's got a good beat. Did you watch that clip I just sent you? No, it's broken my computer. Oh. Paul Scoynes, I've just retweeted a, a very funny clip that Paul Scoynes has just retweeted. N S F. Not suitable for work. W. It's, Although. It, it's very funny. No, I'm not going to listen to it now in case it pops no, out. No, it'll, it'll, it'll pop out of your mic. It's uh, it's a Sky reporter. So they film packages for Sky. I'll watch it. Okay, I want to turn your microphone off then because it might pop out your mic. Uh, they film packages for Sky and they, then they show them during the show, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the presenter going, well, let's go to our reporter now who's there. And it's a reporter outside Big Ben doing a report and Big Ben goes off. Let's just say he's not very zen. No, he's not, is he? He gets a little bit sweary. And to be honest, if you're going to do a report next to Big Ben, check the time. <laughs> there is, there are so many clues as to when it's going to make that big noise, yeah. aren't there? Yeah. That the, the hands, the, the hands, massiveness, the massiveness, and the big hands are the things. You got it, Kels? Good one, apparently. <laughs> I just watched it. What a muppet, Catherine. You, you watch it. I'll turn your microphone off. Go on, let's get it your. It's fine. You, you didn't hear me. Um, I turned your microphone yeah. off. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so Ka- Catherine's microphone is turned uh, off now. He, he says it quite quietly. It's fine. I love things like, but it's, it's her face when it goes back to the studio. But he he's oh, doing his report. He knows he's yeah. live and he's on air. Yeah. And then as he's talking, Big Ben interrupts. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he's standing outside Big Ben. He must yeah. know the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you would think. Bong. <laughs> and then, he, then he swears. I love it. And good then he bomb. cuts back as if it's Big Ben's fault. Yeah. Well, in many ways, it slightly is. But in, in many ways, in many it, ways it, it is. It's always Big Ben's. Fault. Sorry, Catherine. Chief political correspondent as well. Oh, blimey. Be a good timekeeper. Okay. He's, he's, let's 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 enjoy Catherine as she enjoys this moment okay. live on BBC Three Counties Radio. Radio. She's watching a clip on YouTube. Ken's still there. Ken, you still there? Yeah. Good lad. Hilarious. He's been there since school. <laughs> he's been there since about... What time has he been there What since? time have you been there since, Ken? Half seven. Half seven, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll get up early. Yeah, yeah. Kath? I'm glad someone's getting to the bottom of it. Oh, you, why, why is it wrong with you this morning, Ken? What? You've got potty mouth. I'm a bit now. Here we are, we're... another World Cup. Oh, I thought oh, you were going to OK, right. Mm. We're so late for travel. I'm, uh, Travel, are you there? Her name's I Nicola. am indeed. I know her name's Nicola. I'm oh, just... dear. <laughs> we're so late for you, Nicola. That's all right. It's rather amusing. And now we're going to be late for Simon. <laughs> and he's already uh, he's already sent an email that he CC'd me into the boss saying I humiliated him air with the Nicky Lauder joke. What, what, what joke name? was that? Um, it doesn't work like that. Oh, we're so late! Wait, what's his name? Louder! Ah, uh, what's his name? News for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
The M1's looking slow heading southbound between Junction 15 for Northampton and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. Also heavy on the M1 between Junction 13 at Salford Road and Junction 11 Dunstable Road. Take a look at the M25 heavy heavy anti-clockwise between Junction 22 St Albans and Junction 16 the M40 and also rather slow between Junction 24 Potter's Bar and 26 Waltham Abbey. No reported problems on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three, Counties Radio. Yeah, Nicola, let's be funny. We're late for the news now. Sorry. Well, you just do you know what I mean. It's suddenly it's, 20, it's nearly half past a minute past eight. What what, what are we banging on about? Uh, disaster. Disaster. Local and vocal across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's eight o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, child arrests fall across the three counties. Farage targets Aylesbury in the general election and junior doctors returning to Bedford Hospital. BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in Beds, Hearts and Bucks. The biggest reduction in the last five years was in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes, with arrests down by 69%. Francis Crook is from the Howard League for Penal Reform, who compiled the figures. Police forces like Hertfordshire have put a lot of effort into um, giving their their frontline police officers professional discretion to resolve things. So, for example, if a child is caught shoplifting, much better to take the child back to the shop, make them apologise, promise not to do it again. David Cameron will join other EU leaders in Brussels today where they will discuss the success of UKIP and other Eurosceptic parties in the European elections. The Prime Minister says it can't be business as usual. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. We're looking at Aylesbury, we're looking at Rotherham and Eastleigh and parts of Cambridgeshire and many others. These are constituencies in which UKIP has come first in European elections and now has built up a base in local government. Lloyds Banking Group has announced that a 25% stake in the TSB is to be floated on the stock market next month. Lloyds has to sell its TSB branches to meet European regulations. Junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Trainees were withdrawn last July after concerns were raised about a lack of supervision by senior staff. The hospital's chief executive, Stephen Conroy, told this programme the conditional arrangement will be reviewed at regular intervals. This is the first time that the uh, GMC and Health Education England have ever returned uh, trainee doctors once they've been withdrawn, so that's fantastic news for us. But clearly they're going to be very cautious, and the idea is that they'll uh, give us four trainees back in August. They'll carry out a review that's planned anyway in October, uh, and subject to that review, uh, we should get more trainees back uh, following April. Police are continuing to hunt a prisoner who walked out of an open jail in Buckinghamshire on Sunday evening. 36-year-old Wayne McLeod absconded from Spring Hill Prison in Grendon Underwood sometime between 5.15 and 8.15. Thames Valley Police believe he may be in the Reading area. The Nigerian military says it knows where Islamist militants are holding more than 200 schoolgirls who were kidnapped last month, but the army said it would be too dangerous to use force to free the teenagers. In sport, Southampton boss Maurizio Pochettino now is in advanced talks with Tottenham to become their new manager and Andy Murray starts his French Open tennis campaign today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. The weather cloudy with showers or longer spells of rain which will be heavy at times, a maximum temperature 15 degrees Celsius and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's lovely, all the green, all the horses, and no one tells you off if you walk on their bit of land. And all this week, we're featuring Dunstable. We had a great celebration this year, which was the 800 years of the foundation of the Priory. It's all about where you live. I find it very attractive, nice place to live. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. And suddenly it's four minutes past eight. Sing Hosanna's the end. Oh, by the way, I've got a shoot off straight after the show. Oh, that's a disappointment. Sorry? Okay. No, why did you say it in that way? Well, you say it like, oh, I'm going to be withdrawing my attention from you now. Like, I should be upset about it. Well, you should be a little bit disappointed at least. I'll go over it. What? Well, am I still on air? What? Unbelievable. 
Lots to talk about this morning. If you want to take part, 08459 455 555. Child arrests are down. Dementia care is up. And also, what little tricks have you got for um, keeping your children in check? Mine are the threat of putting the television in the garage. I've done it before, so he knows it's real. The other one is I uh, pretend to phone his teacher, the eldest one's teacher. Oh, I'm going to get on the phone to Mrs Jones. Oh, no, don't do that. Hello, is that Mrs Jones? Yes, my son is being a little... Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it, Daddy. I'm sorry. What little tricks have you got for keeping them in check? 08 459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Now, we're always hearing, aren't we, how kids today, oh, they're little so-and-sos and they don't respect anybody and they uh, have fewer boundaries. Well, if you believe what you read in some of the papers, they're cheekier, they're more aggressive, they're more lawless. Well, one charity is going to burst, or at least attempt to burst, that bubble for you. According to the Howard League for Penal Reform, police are arresting significantly fewer children across the three counties than they were five years ago. There's some numbers. Bear with me, there's not too many. The figures suggest a review of police procedure has led to a 57% fall in the number of 10 to 17 year olds in Bedfordshire 69% in the Thames Valley and 67% in Hertfordshire where David Lloyd is the Police and Crime Commissioner David joins me now, it says a review of police procedure, what does that mean exactly? Well we work quite hard and nice to see you, um, we work quite hard uh, with the Howard League just to review what we do with people mm. um, when they've committed a crime and of course it's not easy because um, the highest proportion of people who offend are under the age of 24, that's the majority of people people who offend, and actually that's the majority of people who are victims as well. So it's not easy. But clearly, uh, the child who steals from the sweet shop, um, the most proportionate way mm. of making sure that uh, we don't criminalise them, but they know what they do is wrong, is to do it swiftly, to take them back to the shop and say to the shop owner, um, this is the child, and the child to say sorry. It's that's the way it's The 21st work. century equiv- equivalent of a, a, a clip around the ear. Exactly that. I was surprised that 10-year-olds could even be arrested. But, so, what, I mean, is it just nicking sweets from shops? Or are there more high crimes there? Are there worse well, crimes? Um, the very worst crimes are committed by some people under the age of 18. Mm. Um, and uh, quite often that's because there isn't the maturity there. Quite often that's because there isn't perhaps the, uh, the right education in place. So actually what I'm focusing on is how we get diversionary uh, things in place. So, for example, if you're in South Oxy, box clever. Uh, they teach uh, children how to how to box properly, but how to to keep themselves fit. Um, if you uh, go to uh, um, some uh, parts of the county, fire and rescue are running a life course, which those who have been arrested or at risk of being arrested mm. go on to find out actually how to work together as a team, how to work better. Putting people into diversionary areas works and it works well. So the figure's now 67% down in Hertfordshire. Well done for that. Does that mean less crime is being committed? Well, that's uh, what I hope. But it also... I mean, one of the huge difficulties we've got and uh, is played out elsewhere, and I've, I've talked before and will probably talk again about what is crime. In fact, come to my lecture and hear about it in a, in a few weeks' time. But uh, there is this whole issue about uh, is crime recorded mm. uh, the same as the amount of crime? Um, uh, I think it's very difficult to know exactly what crime is because um, clearly we've got to put on the register somewhere that that Mars bar has gone missing if it's been reported, and it is a crime. Mm. But I think actually what's more important is how we deal with it and that the victim is also content because actually most shopkeepers would also say, I want that restorative justice. I just want them to say sorry and not do it again. I was going to say, are the shopkeepers happy with this or do they see this as, as wimping out? The whole point about restorative justice, as you might call it, is making sure that it's the victim, first of all, who controls what happens. Mm. And actually most shopkeepers in this case would be content to do it that way. Um, It makes a lot more sense. More to the point, I don't want people in 30 years' time to find they can't get a job because they stole a Mars bar 30 years ago. Mm. And that, of course, is the problem we've got if we don't end up with proper restorative justice taking them out of the system. So we put the crime on on, on the record, needs to be done, but we don't then uh, hold it against the person in a way which uh, goes against their name forever. 
You've previously said, as, as a commissioner, you'd like to have powers over youth justice. How would that work? Well, I think that uh, really what I want to have, uh, I, I think would be better, would be, if you like, a better power over the whole area of criminal justice. That's really what police and crime commissioners are doing. To an extent, of course, it starts through through this end. But if you could see it right the way through the CPS, right the way through to, to the end, mm. I think you'd be more likely to get these good outcomes. Good figures. It, I, I, I feel like I should be giving you a, a, a rollicking about something, but I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll find a reason have, to. You must I'm have sure. something up your sleeve that we, I can pounce on. <laughs> I, I look forward to coming back to, to talking about it as always, David. Very nice to see you again. Good Thank you very you. much indeed. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. be a good thing, hasn't it? If, if, if the crime figures are down, if they're using uh, different techniques to scare the kid. It, 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 I guess part of it is a, a little bit of a fear thing, isn't it? You, yeah. you get caught by a copper and dragged back to a shop. It's, it's, it's fearful. Well, that's the way it should be. Some kids don't feel that way, do they? Uh, we've got an email from Jenny. Ian, you're talking about being arrested. My son, who was five at the time, stole some sweets from our local news agents. When I found him munching on them, I frog-marched him back and made him tell the owner he'd stolen them. He was so upset, he's never done it again. He's now 24 and a dad himself and does not allow his son to open or eat anything until he's paid for them. He said what I was... I um, was in a super... a very well-known supermarket the other day. It was Tesco. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, I'm aware of its work. Yeah. And I was buying some supper. My supper... Uh, consisted of a big tub of yoghurt so and posh. some carrots. Supper. And uh, I, I bought some water, I had some water as well. I was queuing up, the queue was massive and I was so thirsty and for the first time ever in my life I actually had to open the water <gasps> in the queue. No, you didn't have to. I did, I was, I was, I could have passed out. No, you couldn't. What's wrong with that? Sorry? What's wrong with well, you that? You shouldn't do it. No, but aren't you going to pay for it anyway? Well, yeah, I am, but, but I could... But you're going to pay for it whether it's in the bottle or your mouth. Yeah, but it's about self-control. Can you really not wait for two more minutes? Keep your hands off. Kelly, again... Hmm? Keep Sorry. issuing that plea to you, but uh, and I felt really guilty doing Why it. And that's touch you here. Mm, I that's here? not so bad, but still that's uh, 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 infringing, infringing of the rights. I have been brought up properly. You don't eat stuff when no. you. It's so when you see kids in the the trolleys with their mums and they're chomping on some animal crackers or something. I saw an adult once eating a baguette. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's a long snack. Wow. And you've got to walk around with it. You have to put half of it on the end of the uh, the checkout. For heaven's sake. Really? In, it's going to take you ten minutes to if, get out of there. If you Wait. walked around in a shop and made yourself a sandwich... <laughs> Which you could do if you pay for the ingredients. Yeah, but if you just got, got a couple of slices of bread, open some bread, got a couple of slices of bread, when I got <gasps> some cheese... What would you make? Well, I'd have a cheese... you have and a shop it. full of ingredients. All the ingredients you, you want. It's just like a munchy yeah. heaven. What, I mean, imagine doing that. And I don't a little th- salad. I, I think that's a legal loophole. I think that they can't do you for that. If you eat it in the shop. Yeah. I think. I'm not sure on the, the actual technicalities. But you have to put all the empty packets on the thing at the end, don't you? That's the rule. Oh, and pay for them? Yeah. Are oh, you going to pay for them in your world, are you? But that's, uh, I think that's the world. I'm just going to chomp on them. Let's, let's do it. That's theft. Let, well, it, it, they should weigh you at the end and yeah. make you pay. <laughs> well, are we, because you're not allowed, what you're not allowed to do now, and you were in the 70s and the 80s, just have a little grape. Well, some people still think that's okay. You know, I still think pop it's. Pop a grape in your mouth. I think it's poor discipline, apart from anything else. Okay, when you go picking strawberries. Never done it. What? Do shopkeepers mind? What, when you steal their food, yeah, no, they to object swipe to that. An empty packet of crisps rather than a pack of crisps. I, I suspect they, they would find think you're it. A scumbag, yeah. They would find it humiliating. Basically, you're kind of just punching them in the face. No. I took go back to something. You've never been to pick fresh strawberries. No. Why would I do that? Sorry. No, why? I haven't either. What? To show your kids where food comes from. I don't and have kids. I'm talking to, to the other one now. I'm talking oh. to Kate. To show your kids where. No, I don't have kids. Talking to Kate. Okay. To show your kids... But I don't have any. ..where food comes from and what the, the effort that's put into getting food. And also, it's fun! It's fun! Can I burst your bubble? Yeah. Their granddad's got an allotment. So what does that mean? So they know where it comes from. It comes does, from granddad's allotment. Does he grow strawberries? I grow strawberries. So you pick them? have got them. peas in the garden. OK. Oh, well, no, you're, no, no, no. no. pick someone else's. So you're... So you're basically, you're, you're lying. So you pick strawberries? No, but this... Well, you pick th- strawberries? We get, like, two a year. You pick bush. strawberries? No, you pick strawberries. You pick, pick strawberries. strawberries. You, you pick, pick strawberries. strawberries. You pick strawberries. You pick strawberries. You pick strawberries. But I've never picked anyone else's. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. 
It's the telephone number. It's fun. You go picking strawberries. It's fun. And you've got. It's fun when you discover the good patch. But where were you going with that story? I've got no idea. You're going to say, I'll go to a farmer's field, pick his strawberries, and eat a few. Yes, I will. St- I'm happy to steal from farmers. Then you are a thief. Thank you very much indeed. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading southbound, still looking rather slow between Junction 15 for Northampton and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. Also heavy on the M1 between Junction 12 for Lytic and Junction 9 for Redbourne. In Berkhamstead, there's been an accident on the high street just between Kings Road and Hall Park, um, so there's causing a few delays in the area there. The M25 heading anti-clockwise, slow moving on the sensors between 22 St Albans and Junction 16, the M40. The A1 is looking heavy heading southbound between the Holiday Inn and Stirling Corner. And the A1M slow moving between Junction 9 for Letchworth and Junction 7 for Stevenage. No reported problems on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, have you ever stolen from a farmer? Yes, I have. And how does that make you feel as a person? Uh, it was good. It was worth it. It's 8.16, it's Tuesday the 27th of May. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets and junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. BBC Three Counties Radio. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Even though it's a small town, you've got a lot of things to do in it. Inviting everyone to where you live. It's a lovely town, it's got a great history. And all this week we're featuring Dunstable. Best part of Dunstable, the Priory Church. It's just full of history and I love it. We're just by the lovely clock tower in Ashton Square. It's a very friendly town and the people are excellent. If you've got a story everyone should hear about, let us tell them about it. Dunstable with the right investment has the potential to be a very, very prosperous town. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks from BBC Three Counties Radio. Ever stolen anything from a farmer? What? Have you ever stolen anything from a farmer? No. Good. <laughs> it's, I have. Have What? Well, only straw... stolen from a farmer? Only strawberries. I mean, Nicola's oh. doing the travel. She I, 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 she didn't say. The implication was she saw like a car or jewellery or something. I don't quite know what was going on there. Or a quad bike. A quad bike. They do love their quad bikes, those farmers, don't they? Uh, just strawberries. No, oh, right. You, you, when you go... You've been, you've been strawberry picking, haven't you? Yes, I have. Fun, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's great fun. But you have a little... Well, yeah. So you have stolen from a farmer. Yeah, although I, d- I wouldn't actively eat them b- without washing them because oh. I do wonder about what might be on them. Who washes fruit and vegetables? Lightweight. Me. Why would you do that? Well, because you can, you can get all kinds of diseases from tomatoes. I told my father off about that the other day. What disease can you get from you, a tomato? You can die from eating a tomato if it's not washed. Seriously, you can, Die of you what? You can get salmonella from, from tomatoes. You can get what? Salmonella. 08459 <clears throat> 455 555. Have you died from eating a tomato? Call me now. Yeah. No, you can. You can get very ill from eating unwashed fruit and vegetables. <laughs> and a lot of... What uh, was that, Catherine? No calls, I'm afraid. No calls on It must one. be true. It is, it is true, Catherine. Yeah. Have you, do you never... I bet you're one of those people that peels carrots as well. Well, take or, them out of the ground, or, bang them on your leg. Oh, that's disgusting. It's not disgusting. Do you know what, do you know what they grow carrots in? The ground. Feces. I thought it was soil. And feces. Well, if it don't kill you, it make you stronger. What's on your show this morning? Coming up on the big phone in this morning from nine... Are you pleased with the results of the European election? Oh. Uh, this morning, party leaders will meet in Brussels to discuss their response to the UK Independence Party's victory at the European elections. It was, it was mammothian, wasn't it? Yes. Mammoth. Mammoth. 
Well, I've already spoken to the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, this morning to find out how he plans to take the party forward after their European success. Meanwhile, Labour leader Ed Miliband is in neighbouring county of Essex today, where he's due to give a speech about rebuilding trust in politics. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Lib Dems, they're responding to calls from inside the party that Nick Clegg should resign as leader. The success of the UK Independence Party has certainly raised questions that the other party leaders need to answer. Mm. Well, from nine this morning, I want your reaction to the European election results. It is pretty historic, really. First time a political party other than Labour or the Conservatives have won an election across the UK. Yep. Do you know that? In 100 years. Mm. Quite remarkable. Well, from nine this morning, your calls on 08459 four double five five double five. Are you pleased with the results of the European election? Or perhaps, like some people I've spoken to this weekend, you are absolutely horrified. And one lady I spoke to at the weekend, horrified at the British people. What, what on earth's wrong with them, she said to me. What on earth Gosh. is wrong with people? It's democracy. Voting for UKIP, she said. What's wrong with them? It's democracy. You don't always like it, but that, that's democracy. You know, I, the, the result might go your way, it might not go your way. It's democracy. Well, from nine this morning, I'd like your reaction, please. Are you pleased with the results of the European election? 08459 four double five five double five. Stay there, because uh, Ian is in Northampton. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, you're, Ian. You're here to back me up on this nonsense that Jonathan Vernon-Smith thinks you can die from a tomato. No, I'm here to back Jonathan up. Yeah. What? Absolutely. He's absolutely right. A friend of mine got poisoned by French beans a few years ago. Oh, those French beans. See, that's why you could have done so well. <laughs> 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 Those dirty French beans coming over here and poison. Well, how what, how did he get poisoned by French beans? Well, it, 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 they weren't washed, and yes. he ended up in hospital, oh. and they did various tests, and they said he'd been poisoned by them because they hadn't been washed. Had he, he eaten always wash French beans? Had he eaten anything else, like prawns or something? Uh, no, they everything they'd eaten. Okay, well, it's, it's such a bad line that I don't think we can take that call as point as being valid. Do you know what they grow French beans in? The earth. Feces. Oh, for goodness sakes. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Dear me. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. A retirement home in Bedford has come up with a unique way of helping residents with dementia. Communal areas at Dame Alice Court have been transformed into themed areas, and the hairdressers has a nineteen fifties look to help tenants remind them of their past. The work was funded by the government at a cost of one hundred and forty thousand pounds. Joined now by Linda Barnes from the Alzheimer's Society, is this technique kind of quite well known, Linda? Um, I think it's becoming more well known. I think, and also the money from the government has helped push the, this initiative forward. So um, I know that there are others looking at it. And reminiscence, as we know it as, is a good tool for helping us to engage with people with dementia um, and you know for their memories and everything else. So it's a good way to you know to help them. Does it need to be as all encompassing as, as having a, a 1950s themed hairdresser, or, or can people kind of do these things at home? Oh no, you can easily do them at home through pictures, um, stories, videos, anything like that, really. I suppose it's about understanding the person with dementia and what their interests were, what they might have done when they were younger. And you can use uh, any sort of tool, really, to help them. Um, I know of um, museums that have reminiscent boxes that might have, like, you know, soaps from a certain era, and, and the smells and the aromas can to can um, engage with people and help them, you know, recall information, you know, as well. Isn't it funny how, um, you know, you can sit there and to tell someone something and it won't register but if you show them a picture or they smell something or they hear a certain piece of music it, it just seems to join the dots doesn't it well it does and it's also i suppose wh where they've got to in their stage with dementia as we know that you know often you know the most recent things are the things that we forget most and then we go back i, I always say go back in time it's like a reversal i think you learn things as you grow up and then it's all of a sudden it feels like you're going back on a reversal and it's those things that people are able to recall that are in that part of their memory and you know, music is one of the things that we know people can engage with and they can enjoy still things like that together. Does the Alzheimer's Society kind of do things like this? 
Yes, we use it. We use it in our services quite a lot. So um, we haven't maybe gone to the point of designing things like, you know, shops and hairdressers. But, um, in, in, you know, I do know um, in Berkshire that we have um, what's known as REM pods. A, re- a REM pod? Yeah, so it's called like a REM pod, and it stands for a re- reminiscence pod. Oh. What it is, you can say that, um, that there are different things, like the hairdressers, like the pub lounge, like the shop, and they're portable, so you can oh. make a, a room look like it. So behind all that is oh. the normal everyday things, like so you'd have your normal flat screen TV, yeah. and then we can cover it over, and it makes it look like a, a TV from well, the 50s, 60s, or 70s sort of thing. So, yeah. Isn't that interesting? I suppose the problem with this is... You're going to need to update it every 10 years or so, aren't you? Well, you will have to think about that as the population changes and, uh, you know, because we're all used to different things. Like, you know, you think you've got the iPhone, iPod and Twitter, Facebook here and now. So how are you going to do that for people to reminisce with? So those are the things we continually have to think about uh, as we move forward. Oh, gosh, in about another 40 years' time, I'm, if, 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 you know, heaven forfend, I get something like this. I'm going to be surrounded by Rubik's Cubes and uh, <laughs> Human League God, posters and I've things. i all those sort of things. Uh, yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Linda, listen, I, I, I wish you the very best of luck. I, I, you. you know, keep, keep up doing the good work. And it sounds like this uh, is a cracking idea. That's Linda Barnes from the Alzheimer's Society. You can share your stories on that. 08459 four double five five double five. We're also talking about, uh, well, there's a reduction in uh, y- y- child crime. 10 to 17-year-olds are being arrested less. Uh, oh, no, this is, this is Helen, sorry, talking about we're, we're going around a supermarket eating food. I worked in a major supermarket. We had a customer who every week would pick up a bunch of grapes eat them on the way round the store and then present the stalks at the checkout. The next time he came to my till, I called a manager to select a similar-sized bunch, asked the customer if he thought that was the approximate size, weighed them and charged him for them. He stopped eating grapes on the way round the store after that. Why would you even think that that was acceptable? What, weighing the grapes? No. Eating them. Do you still... You don't get... You don't get scales anymore. Yes, you do. No. Yeah. No, you don't. You do. Where? Next to the fruit and veg? No. They're electronic? No. Yes, you do. You don't. Fact. You have, uh, incorrect fact. It happens. It doesn't happen. It happens. No, it doesn't. Because I don't remember it. Ian, next time you go, just have a little yeah. look. Yes, Catherine. Yeah. Have a little look. I'll have a little look. You'll see something shiny and metallic. Yeah, is it that? No, they're your fingers. You'll see something shiny and metallic that people are putting their fruit onto. In little bags. That's called, a, that's called a shopping basket. Then a sticker pops out. No, it doesn't. Then you sweep your sticker <laughs> The sticker off. doesn't pop out. You don't put your own stickers on. It's the thing that keeps my kids going round the supermarket. They do let the weighing. Let me speak to the sensible one. Kelly? Hello? Kelly? Yep. Can you get Justin up? I need to have a word with him. Sure. What now? Yeah. Watching GMTV. Sorry? Doesn't Chris Tarrant look like a pillow? <laughs> oh, whoa! Hang on a second. You can't libel one of Britain's greatest entertainers. I'm looking at him. He looks like a pillow. OK, well, I, I've got no idea what was going on there. They don't have the scales in the supermarkets anymore. They used to have them. They don't have them anymore. Yeah, they they don't. Do. Catherine, they don't. They do. They actually do. They actually don't. They really do. No, they don't. They have. They haven't got them because no one weighs their food. You if pick someone's up... in the supermarket now, can you take a picture and send Everything is pre-packed to a certain weight or you know what it, you know what it looks like what you want it to be. You know what it looks like what you want it to be. Saying it over and over doesn't make it true. Who's this on the phone? Lee. Hello, hello. Well, yeah, go on, Lee. What do you want to say? You do get scales in supermarkets. See? What are you talking about? Where? Well, do you want me to name them? Yes, I do, actually. Well, Sainsbury's, Asda, nope. I went in there the other day. Well, but, um, well, you don't, mate. You don't? You, in there. Mate, you don't. I don't know why you've called up to lie. <laughs> are you are you related to Catherine Boyle in some way? No, not at all. Yeah, uh, OK. And do, do you ever use them? Yeah, I do. I use them on, I use them on Sunday. Why would you weigh things? You know what you want it to be by the way what it looks like. What? Do you know how much it costs? Who cares what it costs? You know, I want. I need this amount of grapes. I need this amount well, of broccoli. Some of us have to money here, not like you, mate. Well, you're you're bu- you're buying my broccoli, and it's 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 much appreciated, Lee. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Look, there are three more phone calls coming in. They are all agreeing with me. Travel news for beds, hearts, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
So moving on the M1, heading at southbound on the speed sensors between Junction 13 for Bedford and Junction 12 for Flittick. Also heavy on the M1 between Junction 12 for Flittick and 9 at Redbourne. The A1M is looking rather slow as well between Junction 9 at Letchworth and Junction 7 for Stevenage. And in Berkhamstead, there's been an accident at the moment on the high streets. That's between Kings Road and Hall Park. So some delays there in the area. The M25 in both directions rather slow moving between Junction 24 for Potter's Bar and 26 for Waltham Abbey. And taking a look at the A1, that's looking slow, heading southbound between the Holiday Inn and Stirling Corner. No reported problems on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola Richards, farm thief. <laughs> what did you steal? Jewellery, rings, cash? Courgette. <laughs> <laughs> Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8.30, I'm Simon Oxley. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets. David Cameron has been pressing his case for far-reaching reforms to the European Union in a series of phone calls to EU leaders. He'll join other heads of government in Brussels today. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Tottenham are in advanced talks with the Southampton mar- manager Maurizio Pochettino to take over at White Hart Lane. The Argentinian would become Spurs' ninth manager in 13 seasons. BBC pundit Mark Lawrenson believes he should consider that short-term ethos. Pochettino's leaving, leaving a club like Southampton, who probably until they, they got rid of Cortes, it actually were a, t- were a team and a club thinking of six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years down the road. And I just don't see that with Tottenham. Fleetwood won the League Two playoff final, beating Burton 1-0 at Wembley and Wickham striker Stephen Craig has signed a new one-year contract. The 33-year-old joined Wanderers last summer. In tennis, there was a major shock at the French Open with third seed and Australian Open champion Stan Wawrinka losing in four sets to Spain's Guillermo Garcia Lopez. Andy Murray starts today against Andre Golubev of Kazakhstan. More from Russell Fuller. Poor in Madrid, but much improved in Rome. And with five Davis Cup clay court matches already under his belt, optimism of another strong Grand Slam showing is rising. Murray told me he hasn't studied his draw this year, so he won't know that his Davis Cup nemesis Fabio Fonini, rather than Vavrinka, is now the highest seed in his quarter. Murray will have to take care, though, against the world number 53 Andre Golubev, as he's already beaten Vavrinka in Davis Cup this year. But the cream normally rises to the top over five sets and Murray should run out a comfortable winner. And Mercedes boss Nicky Lauda says he will talk to Lewis Hamilton before the next race in Canada to smooth over the tense situation within the team. The Hertfordshire driver accused teammate Nico Rosberg of deliberately going off the Monaco track to stop him challenging for pole in Saturday's qualifying session with Rosberg then going on to win Sunday's race. BBC Three Counties News and Sports. The next full bulletin is at nine. Call 08459 455 555 BBC Three Counties Radio Ken? What? Hello? Ken? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Anne's in Bushy. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Ian. They, they, They do not have scales in supermarkets any more. They are long gone. They're consigned to the history bin to the memory banks. You are a huge, 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 huge fibber. Sorry? I have, last year, I retired after 28 years. You must be tired. <laughs> Don't be rotten now. Stop it. After 28 years in one of the supermarkets. And I still use the, one of the supermarkets and... Yeah. They have scales in there. And like Catherine said, you get the little white ticket that comes out to stick on your shopping. Why would you do that? Why don't you just go and um, scale it, uh, let them weigh it at the counter? No, 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 no. Oh, you, yes, 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 if yes. If you forget... Forget what? To, if you forget to have them, to weigh them yourself, you go to, the, to uh, when you go to the counter, you... then they weigh... No, 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 now don't interrupt. Uh, you well, keep I'm not doing gonna... this all the time, I, I, Ian. And I have to interrupt because you're talking utter guff. No, no, uh, no. Are you, are you going... I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, when you as go far to your... as, uh, as uh, eating things going around the shop, yes. I worked on checkout, right? Yes. And when the customer used to come by and she'd give you a banana skin, empty banana skin, yeah. 
No more bananas, just one banana. No, skin no skin, away. no bananas, just skin. So yes. I used to say to one of my colleagues, "Could you go back and get me the biggest banana you can find?" Oh, yeah. Yes. You like a big one? <laughs> and you wear Steady. that, and it used to cost her more than the one she just eaten. When? But yes. if you right, can I name the shop then? Well, are you going to be rude about them? No, 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 no. Well, I suppose if you, you can. If you put the Sainsbury's over the dome. Yeah. Right, opposite as the yeah. you will weigh your own and, food and so veg there. To get to this Sainsbury's, do you have to get into your time machine and go back to nineteen seventy three? No one has to weigh their food anymore and print up their own price tags. Of course tags. do, you don't even go shopping anymore. No, so I, get the, I, I get the I get the butler to do it, but still Anne, he never tells me about the of course I go shopping. <laughs> you ask Jonathan. Jonathan is the one that knows about shopping. You ask Jonathan. Well, Jonathan thinks you can die from a tomato poison. Oh, no, that frightened me this morning because one of my favourite, favourite fruits. Now you contradict me of tomatoes. Can fruit. we just sort this thing out once and for all, OK? Yes, now, we are, all listening. we all know that a tomato's a fruit, right? We all know it's a fruit. Yeah. Can't we just call it a vegetable? You don't have it in the fruit bowl. Let's call You put it in salads. Let's call it... Can't we just change the definition and call it a vegetable? No, you can't keep changing just because you want to change it. No, we're not going to keep changing. We're going to change it once, and we're going to put it in the vegetables so that well, it's some smart aleck will go, well, actually, it's not a vegetable, it's a fruit. Oh, get, get lost, it's a vegetable. We changed it in 2014, you sucker. <laughs> I said sucker, Anne, before you start phoning up to complain. Anyhow, you take care. Thank you very much, Anne. Ken? What? It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, but you're supposed to wash your tomatoes. Reclassify it as a vegetable. Eh? Re- Reclassify it as a vegetable. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much indeed, Ken. Dave Luton's on the line. Good morning, boss. Good morning, Dave. Why do you rant and rave at our lovely Kelly and Catherine? C- you mean Kate? Catherine, pal. Oh, I've got a message from Jonathan Vernon Smith. Uh, he's... I don't know where... He, he's just messaged me, I keep my tomatoes in the fruit bowl! Of course he does. But, 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 but no, let's just reclassify them as veg... I can't believe, of all the stuff we've talked about dementia, we've talked about kids committing crime, people are phoning in to talk about dying from tomatoes and scales. This is what it's right. come down to. You forgot the French bean yeah. poisoning incident. Oh, for goodness sakes. Scales. Yes, Dave. Go into Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, you'll see the scales hanging up there that you can weigh your potatoes, Why? your bananas. Why would you want to weigh your potatoes? Why? Because they come in single. If you don't want a bag right. of potatoes, right. you right. can, you can right. weigh them. When I cook, when I cook potatoes, yeah. right, I, oh, know, I know how many potatoes I want to eat. By, by the number of potatoes, my eyes looking at them, and my belly, right? I don't think, hmm, do you know, I really fancy eating um, five kilograms of potatoes today, so I'm going to get five ki- kilograms of potatoes and, and weigh them. Oh, no, there's six kilograms. Put one of those kilograms of potatoes back because I, I go, oh, that looks about right. I'll have that. Do you never, yeah, but, do you never yeah, follow but, a recipe? A what? A recipe where it'll say how many of something you want. Not with potatoes, no. Well, why? Well, what, what can you cook you potatoes? Can't go free you got hand jacket, with a potato. Jacket potatoes, roast potatoes, uh, boiled potatoes, potato salad. That's your four potato meals. But, okay. What but, about your rosti? Don't eat none of that foreign muck. But the, the case is, Ian. Yes, Dave. When you weigh your. Um, Items, you're just seeing what the price is, don't you? Well, did, oh, not, so you're not just weighing. All right, so, so okay, out. so you're fo- you're following one of these so-called recipes, and no, you, no. You, you're going to go. Oh, it says I need five kilograms of potatoes in this recipe, but no. I, I can't afford it, so I'm going to only get it three. Well, then then you've no. you, then the recipe's no, ruined. Excuse me, excuse me. No, you weigh them to see how much the price of those b- b- potatoes or bananas are, don't you? What on earth? What what meal has got potatoes and bananas in, you sick deviant? Oh, no. Excuse me, don't let me have to come down there, pal, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll come up there. I'll, well, meet, I'll meet you halfway. How's that sound? Yeah, OK, then. Good lad, thank you very much. Ken? Boy, 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 come on. Thank you very much. Sheila? Good morning. Good morning, Sheila. At last, a sensible voice in this uh, discussion, someone who no doubt will support reason and indeed rhyme. Don't do it as a poem, that would be do, uncomfortable. Do, do, do I... Do, do, do. I assume... Da, da, da. Yes. ...that when you go shopping, you only see things that are in a packet... Well, uh, Sheila, loose. can I the say... Loose assume, assume makes an ass buy, out of you and me. 
if you want to buy one and a half kilos of new potatoes yeah. or yeah. whatever, they are loose yeah. and they have to be weighed and they have little weighing machines. No. Well, they, we call also, them scales, Sheila. if you go to a place that begins with W, there are other supermarkets. W.H. Smith's? <laughs> Waitrose. OK, yeah. Then you can turn round and there are scales and you put it on, you weigh it and you get your little sticker. No, 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 no. Y- you're wrong. I'm afraid to say... Don't be afraid. I am right. And this happens today in this modern world. No, Sheila, it doesn't. Well, I don't know if you've noticed. When you go up to the till, right, the till is uh, weight... I don't expect that you've even noticed that you can go and work out your own shopping as you go round and zap it, No, you? I don't like that. that there's not, that's not what I'm going to the shopping experience for. Why would I want to work out how much it costs? I, I look at no, the you prices. don't work out. It's already totted up, so by yeah. the time you get to the till, Beautiful. you're through. At the very, very most, I will use those do-it-yourself tills, although it constantly breaks down and I have to get a young man to come and give me no, a no, hand. No, 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 these are not do-it-yourself tills. These are where you get your little zapper as you walk in. Why? And then you just look at the item, oh. you press it towards the item, and it just takes it in. And, and then uh, and then Sheila gets into her metal box and drives to her home and t- shuts her door and has no com- conversation with anybody. Sheila is a robot. We, we're losing the art of talking to people and having eye contact, Sheila. Um, well, I think sometimes the art of conversation, where you're always telling us we're wrong mm. when yeah. we're actually right... Yeah. It's probably why we don't talk anymore. Hang on, I'm the reason that you don't talk to people in supermarkets. No. That's libel. Is it? Well, it isn't... <laughs> it's libel in the Bible. Isn't it libel when you turn around and tell people they're wrong or call them silly names? Not when it's fact, Sheila. Isn't that right, Ken? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Colin's in Dunstable. Good morning. Good morning, Colin. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Don't, don't apologise for being in Dunstable. No, I'm not apologising for being in Dunstable. Hang on a second. Ken? What? Can you say your name is Colin in Dunstable? My name's Colin in Dunstable. Uh, are you holding your nose when you do that? Yeah. OK. Colin? Yeah? Can you say my name's... Hang on, who's that? This is Colin in Dunstable. No, I want to speak to the real Colin in Dunstable, not Ken pretending to be Colin I in Dunstable. I am the real Colin in Dunstable. No, you're not. I am. No, Ken. Oh, no, Colin. How are you, mate? I'm all right. Wash your tomatoes in case you get hairs on them. I'm so confused. Yeah. I'm so confused. My screen has gone blank. I don't know who's 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 which. I... So who's Colin in Dunstable? Me. Me. Well, hang on. Line one said it first. Who said it first? Me. Right, OK, so Colin. Yes. No, not... Uh, fake uh, Ken, not you. I'm talking to the real Colin. I know um, Colin. I know. I'm talking to you. Tell me to. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Colin. Oh, dear. Ken, keep quiet. I'm talking to Colin. Colin? Yes? No, not you. They're talking to Colin. Oh, yes, me. Yeah, Colin. They've both oh, gone now. It goes, it goes back on Monday. Who does? You do. Where? Funny farm. Right, Colin. I'm losing the will to live. Yeah, me too, to be honest. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Got a vexed text. Oh, go on. Who's, who's uh, got who's some vexed? vexes? Tom, Tommy Milton Keynes. That Nicky Lauder joke's about 30 years old, says Tom. Which, th- which joke? Which joke? The joke about who? Nicky. Nicky who? Nicky Lauder. <laughs> <laughs> It is about 30 years old, but it's still, fu- it's still funny, what man. What joke, though? You, you can't set it up like that. What? Let's do it properly. OK. What's his name? Who? Nicky Lauders. Nicky Lauders who? No, that's wrong. Come in. You're doing it wrong. No, you've got to start with knock-knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Nicky. Nicky, Nicky who? who? Nicky Lauder. Nicky who? It doesn't work because you can't say the first... You've got, you, knock-knock. You've got, Who's there? Interrupting cow. No. It's... You've got to... Boo! D- you've OK, I, I know what you're saying. Let's do it. OK. What's his name? Nicky Lauder. Oh. No, then you say, well, uh, Nicky um, who? No, cos... You can't... Cos the punchline has to be who. louder. Yeah. OK. What's his name? Moo! <laughs> What's his name? Who? Nicky's. So I was reading uh, about racing car driving in the 1970s and the 1980s in the weekend. Where are you reading? <laughs> Shush. Anything. And one of my heroes from that uh, was a, a racing gentleman whose name was Nicky Lauder. Nicky who? Lauder. 
Nikki, yeah. who? That doesn't feel right. No, feels very wrong. It's about 30 years old, that joke. Yeah, I don't know. Why are we telling that? Sorry, Tom. Yeah, sorry about that, Tom. I do, I do apologise. <sighs> Should we have a quick look at the front pages? Although I, I don't feel motivated to do such a thing anymore. Isn't it funny? We've put, we've, we've put out some really good stuff to talk about. Nobody rang in about my singers who don't sing like they, you think that they well, would sing. And also the good stuff that we put out to talk about. Mm. Uh, they call in to, to, to lie about the number of um, wires. Ken? Ken? Yes? What are you doing? What? Why does it sound... Pick up your phone and stop being on speakerphone, you plum. He's, he's using the speakerphone to listen to the radio. Right, Ken. No, I'm not. Have you fallen down a metallic hole? No, I'm waiting to finish my phone. Well, I can't finish. It's a terrible phone line. Oh, all right. Take us off speakerphone, Ken. What do you mean? Take us off speakerphone. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's what we're dealing with. Sounds like he's in space. Now, I'm, I'm dubious of going um, to Nicola for the travel. Why? Well, the whole have you stolen from a farmer thing, it was supposed to be a little bit of fun, a little bit of bants, just a bit of joshing. I don't, obviously, I don't condone stealing from farmers unless they really, really deserve it. No. And I was talking about, oh, I, you know, stole a couple of strawberries. I mean, oh, great, arrest me. Ooh, David Did they Lawrence taste could, bitter? Uh, they, the they, guilt? They, they tasted of tears and uh, faeces, strangely enough. <laughs> Um, but but Nicola's she actually stole a load of courgettes. What? She stole a load of courgettes, a load of courgettes. That's about the most middle class thing you can steal, isn't I it? Just, I'm just I'm just worried if we go back to her now for the travel, a lot of young people are off on their half term this way. I didn't know it was half term. I found out the hard way. <laughs> well, the kids still being there. <laughs> the kids are at home. <laughs> Uh, I just there are a lot of lot of lot of kids listen to this show. They look at me as you know being a, a fun kind of funky guy. I'm their inspiration. They're going to listen to Nick well, and go, "Oh wait, let's go and steal some courgettes." L- let's rain it rain it back then. Call theft is not cool. Yeah. What? Call theft. It's the theft so of courgettes. So are you saying that you think her travel needs would be untrustworthy? Well, I'm just saying. Can, could you trust someone who'd stolen courgettes from a farmer? Probably. Yeah, she's from Luton. I couldn't. No, I certainly couldn't. So with that in mind, bearing in mind that uh, 66%, two-thirds of this team, don't trust uh, Nicola, the uh, travel girl. Let's, let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. The M1 heading southbound, very slow moving between Junction 15 for Northampton and Junction 14 at Milton Keynes. In Dunstable, there's a traffic lights aren't working at the moment on Luton Road at Boscombe Road Gyrotary, so it's causing delays in the area there. Taking a look at the M25, heading clockwise, very heavy between 24 Potters Bar and Junction 25 for Enfield. The M40 is looking very heavy on the sensors London bound between Junction 7 for Tame, Junction 4 for the Handy Cross roundabout. So far, the A1M slow moving are between Junction 9 for Letchworth and Junction 7 for Stevenage. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much. Apologies to anyone who was offended by the bad language in that travel report there. It's 8.47, it's Tuesday the 27th of May. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has named Aylesbury among their general election targets after their success in the European elections. Latest figures show fewer children are being arrested by police in the three counties. Arrests are down 69% in the Thames Valley, which covers Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes. And junior doctors are to return to Bedford Hospital's paediatric unit from August following a successful inspection. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Let's get the latest weather now. Here's Ken. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Shall I do it? Ken? What? Do you want to do the weather with me? Yeah. OK. So it's cool and cloudy with heavy what at times? Right. Yep, well done. Most areas will start off cool and cloudy with showery outbreaks of... Right. Yeah. This will affect most parts throughout much of the day with occasional heavier bursts at... Right. No. Maximum, te- mm? Maximum temperature of 18 what? 18 degrees. Celsius. Tonight it will be cloudy with further... Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and heavier bursts at times... It will also be misty over the Chilterns. If we look at Wednesday... How do you know that? Oh, hello. Oh, for goodness sakes. 
It's going to be wet. Every weekday from 12, Nick Coffer brings you... Why did Wet 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 break up? You know, it, it surprised me that it, that it lasted so long, but I think there's always going to be Aye. something that trips you up. Great guests. And we're on King's Charity is celebrating its fifth anniversary after changing many young people's lives. Great music. This is the Drifters kissing in the back row of the movies. Hello to Adam, who has messaged me, so I'm playing some great tunes today. Great conversations. I'm in the library in Houghton Regis as part of our big tour. A lot of Houghton Regis was mainly 18. 19th century. There was a big fire in the 1600s which burnt the village out. Nick Coffer, weekdays from 12 on BBC <laughs> Three Counties Radio. Uh, Tony Fisher, who works here, and I only found out last week that he's a reporter here, has just tweeted uh, a racing gentleman, tomatoes, deaf footballers, and Ken, hashtag award winning. And do you know what? I think he could be right. I think he could be right. 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number. Uh, Ken is in Luton. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. And Justin Dealey is... Well, where are you, Just? In Luton. Hey! Hey, good morning, boss. Good morning to you. It's been an odd show today, Just. It, it has, hasn't it? Yeah. We've thrown out... Am I speaking to Ken or Justin? Uh, JD. Oh, I'm Ken in Luton. Yeah, Ken in Luton. Right, OK, we're going to play a game, OK? In. Ken? Ken? What? You're going to say, I'm Ken in Luton. I'm Colin in Dunstable. OK, then I'm going to say, I'm Ken in Luton. And then Justin's going to say he's Ken in Luton. And the co- listeners have to call in and guess who's the real Ken in Luton, OK? Oh, yeah. Right, you go first. I'm Ken in Luton. Right, uh, Ken in Luton number two, away you go. I'm Colin in Dunstable. No, you've, oh, you've muffed it up. OK. Justin. I'm Ken in Luton. Who is the real Ken? Was it one, two, or three? Oh, wait, four, five, nine, four, double, five, <laughs> five, double, five. Now, this, uh, kids watching TV and playing on phones and things when they're having their tea. Yeah, you don't like it. I don't like it. Really, I think it's bad parenting. Mm, absolutely. Well, uh, we had a, a classic quote earlier on from one man who said, well, I've got two children, and I let my two children watch the television during dinner time. He says, well, it's fine because uh, th- they can watch the TV in between mouthfuls. Oh. What a quote that was. Flip it. I I think it's shocking to be honest the, 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 uh, and it sounds like uh, and, uh, sometimes I exaggerate things, I'm not on this it genuinely breaks my heart that you don't sit down with your kids, say right so what did you do at school today, mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Well, uh, uh, my boys ask me what I did at work yeah. you know I explain to them what I did they tell me, what they, they tell me who they played with they tell me um, uh, what pictures they've drawn, they do all that kind of stuff It's weird, Ian, at the end of this package coming up here we have uh, something quite interesting we, oh. have, uh, uh, we have two parents uh, w- with two different viewpoints but uh, the survey out today says that almost 9 out of 10 children aged 6 to 10, they're using TVs, iPads, mobile phones, computers, video games and radios during dinner. So I've been getting reaction from parents and grandparents. Here's what they had to say. Carrie, here with your granddaughter this morning. Would you allow your granddaughter to watch TV, play video games, play on an iPad during dinner time? She can watch TV, but she's not playing on iPad or video games. The TV is generally on, yes. Yeah. Why don't you turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> because I have only I only live in a small place and there's no room for a table and chairs or anything, so we have to sit with it on our laps. So she has it, we have the TV on. I mean, if you had a dinner table, would you then turn the TV Probably, off? Probably, yes, yeah. or have her sitting with her back to it. Because Ian's got this view this morning that if you're a parent or a grandparent, essentially, if you're letting your, your child that, that you're with watch TV during dinner time, you're a bad parent or a bad grandparent. What would you say to that? No, I don't agree. No, we still chat. So we don't need to sit at the table and chat. We chat all the time. And she's at school all day, so, you know, that's her only bit of leisure time, really, because she, she f- leaves me at half past six and she's home in bed by seven. And you can still have a conversation. Oh, yeah. Even though you're watching TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, children eating their dinner, watching TV, how do you see that? Is that wrong? I believe that to be wrong. They need to eat their dinner and not pay attention to what's going on on TV. Um, it was the way I was brought up. Um, we weren't even allowed to have drinks before we finished our dinner, so I don't think it's right for children to be eating dinner and watching TV at the same time. Lisa, you've got uh, two children, correct? OK. Um, do you allow your children to, to watch TV during dinner time? No. He does. I don't. <laughs> right, so we've got a debate here between a pair of you. So, so you don't. Tell us why you don't believe it's right. Because they don't eat their dinner. They don't eat dinner, they don't talk to their parents. Yeah. Okay, now you think it is okay. Well, why do you think it is okay? It's educational. It's educational for the kids to watch TV so, news. So that they're never watching things like cartoons I and soaps and things all like the time. that? Home and away, stuff like that, neighbours. How can home and away and neighbours be educational? 
Oh, well, to them, it's, it's different for kids. They understand it better. What, Australian culture? Oh, yeah, they do. Australian culture's different to ours. <laughs> Cartoons, they watch them all the time. <laughs> There you go, boss. You, uh, wow, you've mm. you've peaked. Take, you've got the rest of the week <laughs> off, mate. You Thank won't you. beat that. D- 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 home and away and neighbours are educational. Australian culture, because the kids they get it better than us, and they should be watching those soaps during dinner time. Flipping it! Wow. Flip! I'm I'm speechless by that. Mm. I had to wait a while to get that, but uh, yep. you know, most parents this morning said to me, "Yeah, yeah, of course, of course." Of course. And then suddenly, okay, can, can we have a, a quick conversation? Or I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I mean, the majority of parents I've spoken to this morning do allow their children well, to shocking. sit down shocking. and have dinner and watch TV. You know where they don't want to talk because they know they're wrong. Mm-hmm. And they, they they can't string a sentence together for more than thirty seconds because they've lost the power of talking to a real person. And Quite as for possibly. this chat, you know, oh, we talk while the telly. On yeah, it's all. Oh, what's he been in? Yeah. Oh, is that thingy from? Uh... We've got that tea towel. We've got that tea towel. Go and get it. We've got that one. Hey, I'll rewind it. I've missed it now. You've been talking, Catherine. Okay, mm. your children. They need to know about Australian culture this evening. Yeah. Okay, forget this ban on TV. Let them watch Home and Away during dinner time, and just watch your children learn and grow as people. You haven't yeah. got kids, have you? Just no. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, we're talking about uh, we're going to reclassify, and we can do this. Can be a campaign, and we can make this happen with the BBC. We're going to um, bring some sense back. I'm going to put the sense back into sense. That reminds me, John from Bedford rang to say you uh, were being very silly this morning. He wants you off. Oh, and someone else rang and said, "Get this clown off the radio." Didn't I assume they meant you? Yeah. <laughs> two things. Two things. Okay. You didn't need to mention that on air, and you didn't need to mention it to me. Oh. But thanks. Thanks anyway. Uh, we're going to sort out the classification. I'm going to put the class back into classification of fruit and vegetables. The what? The what? The it would work. In, it would work in, in your accent. I'm going to put the class in classification of fruit and vegetables, our kid. <laughs> What's a vegetable? I don't know. I just saw it on uh, Home and Away. Yeah, chew on your d- Greg's dummy and shut up. <laughs> We're going to put the class back into classification of right. fruit and vegetables, OK? Right. So, tomato, no longer a fruit, it's a vegetable. Why? Because it's a ve- you have it in a salad. Potato. Well, it's a, ve- well, it's a vegetable. Do you want to keep it a vegetable? Yeah, I'm not, I don't need to go through all of them. It's just the silly okay. ones. All right. And Len has sent in a stroppy text. Well, I'll sort Len out straight away. Ian, you can't reclassify a banana from a fruit to a vegetable as it's a herb. Yeah, Right. True. Well, OK... I don't want to reclassify it from a fruit to a vegetable because it's a fruit and it's not a herb, it's a banana. When has anyone have been um, like cooking something spicy and gone, have we got any um, banana I can sprinkle on this? It done, unless it's a banoffee pie, it doesn't happen. So it's a banana. Is that one word? What? Doesn't happen. One at a time, yeah, Kelly. Doesn't happen. Banana. I'm confused too. Ken? Hey. What do you want? <laughs> What, why are you still on the phone, Ken? You're co- Who's paying for this bill? Oh, he's been on since half seven. Ken, why is your phone sounding all echoey? Pick it up. Stop messing about. OK, what do you want? Are you supposed to wash bananas? No, because you, bana- you, know, you don't wash bananas. My wife's give me a banana and she ain't washed it. You're not supposed to wash a banana. What, before I eat it? No, because it's in a skin. Oh, so is a tomato. Well, yeah, but you eat the tomato skin. If you're watching, why does this phone sound so absolutely bobbins? I can, I, I do apologise. Yesterday's show, very, very poor. Today's show, eh, not really, um, not really raised the standard too much. We'll sort out this reclassification of fruit and vegetables later on in the week. That's, that's going to be a goer. Don't worry about it. No, Re- was, you're putting no, the no class into what? Cares. I'm putting the class into classification. Ah, oh. it's funny when people speak properly, isn't it? You've never heard it. What are you going to put, Kelly? You're going to put the Oh, for goodness sakes. Don't, don't, don't so when's, it gonna, when's someone going to come on and speak properly? It's me. Oh, is that you doing it then? I'll do, I'll do it. I'll speak proper. What do you want me to say? Um, who, was the, who were those Muppets that said they wanted this clown off? I don't know. Let's call them Steve and Mark. Tim's also saying it now. Well, well, what's Tim? Who's Tim? Do you want Tim who works here on Jonathan's show? Yeah, he hates you. That's so rude. I know. How rude! He really hates you. Uh, well, I, I, but I'm looking down the list of things that Tim sent, and he's generally quite angry about everything he listens okay. to. Well, Nick says I've never laughed as much along to your show as today. His interaction with callers and JVS about scales and tomatoes was brilliant. He's never laughed as much 
take that quote slightly out of context. Very sad life. He's never laughed as much as he has today. Oh. Well, that's happy. Well, that just proves uh, it's the winning formula. One out of how many people? Oh, for goodness sakes. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Very heavy on the M1, heading southbound between Junction 12 for Flittick and Junction 9 for Redbourne. In Dunstable, seeing delays on Luton Road at the Boscombe Road during Rotary, as the traffic lights aren't working at the moment there. Also on the M25, heading anti-clockwise, seeing delays between Junction 20, Kings Langley, and Junction 12, the M3. Taking a look clockwise on the M25, very heavy at the moment, between Junction 24 for Potter's Bar and 25 for Enfield. Taking a look so far at the A1M, that's looking slow between Junction 9 for Letchworth and Junction and seven of Stevenage. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you again. Apologies for anybody offended by the uh, coarse language in that travel bulletin. I, I, mean, I don't know what they teach these travel people these days. That's it. That's your lot. Ken, say goodbye. There we go. That's that's Ken. He's turning to Metal Mickey of all people. JBS is up next. We'll be back tomorrow at six. We'll try and do a decent show for you tomorrow, but I cannot promise anything. Okay. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon Smith. It's Tuesday. It's nine o'clock. And on today's big phone-in, are you pleased with the results of the European election? Party leaders meet in Brussels this morning to discuss their response to the UK Independence Party's